and welcome to the live stream. I am your hostess, Jenna Moresi. Um, if you're not familiar, I am a number one best-selling I had to think about it. What? Who am I? What have I done? Who am I? Am I am a number one. <laughs> <I? laughs> I'm having immediately an introspective. Right? <laughs> crisis right now. What is this planet? Where, what are we doing here? Oof. I am a number one Amazon bestselling author of dark fantasy romance as well as writing craft books. You can uh, check out my uh, award-winning series, The Savior Series. The first two books are out right now, The Savior Champion and The Savior Sister. And the third book, The Savior's Army, is on its way. I only have five chapters left to write so um it's i think i have about i have about fifteen thousand words left to write i think oh, so the chapters are that's be not short. that much no. it's between that's fifteen thousand and twenty thousand words if i'm if it's going to be at my target so it's Very almost cool. done guys be prepared I'm excited. um if you need help writing your book with if, if you're here then you probably do check out i'm gonna sneeze maybe it'll be snedging snedge a snedge. snedge. Oh, I don't know if you were here for that, Matt, but snedging is when sometimes I feel like I need to sneeze, but then it doesn't happen, and I say oh. the sneeze is edging me. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Well, it disappeared. That was a snedge. Everyone, if you have the bingo card, you can mark off snedge. Um, anywho, uh, wait, that's on the, yeah, I think that's on the bingo card. But it's anywho, definitely on the bingo card. <laughs> shut up and sneeze. But anywho, if you need help <laughs> writing your book, check out Shut Up and Write the Book. It's available at all major retailers and it is very, very helpful. And I may or may not have another writing craft book coming out next year. Ooh, 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 secret information. Anywho, um, uh, if you are new to these live streams, what we do is we, uh, do writing sprints, which is where we set the time for 20 minutes and we write as many words as we possibly can on our current work in progress. Progress. If you, uh, we're not going to provide a prompt for you, that is for you to do. You are working on whatever the fuck you need to get done. This is all about productivity. Um, if you are not in the drafting phase of your work in progress, that is fine. You can outline, you can beta read, you can critique, you can, you know, do whatever. I'm going to be working on my newsletter for this uh, particular uh, writing sprint. So yeah, just the idea is to be productive and uh, hang out together. And then afterwards, we will be answering all of your writerly questions and maybe playing some games. Hooray! Yes. Uh, let's go ahead and introduce our special guests, starting with this lovely lady right here. Hi, I'm Iona Wayland, <laughs> um, and I'm a dark fantasy author of Ashes that you can get on ebook and audiobook on Amazon and Audible. Oh, and paperback. All the normal things. And... <laughs> Um, I also, if you're interested in binging a um, podcast, I have Creepy Court and Folklore that I'm taking a hiatus from, but you've got 80 episodes you can choose from. And I do crystal ball readings. And yes. someone just scheduled a crystal ball reading for me today. So that Yay. was exciting. And now your turn. And I am Matt Holland. I am a dark fantasy author editing my debut novel. I'm also the author of The White Harvester, which is a pirate short story available in Sasha Black's The, oh, yes. <laughs> the Rebel Diaries anthology. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon and all those other book yeah. purchasing places. And uh, if you want to see more of me, you can follow me on Amazon. Nope, you can't follow me on Amazon because that's not a thing people can do. <laughs> That would be cool, though. Uh, you can, yeah, just see what I buy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can follow me on Instagram, which is a social media, and TikTok, which is also a social media. <laughs> Jenna can't get enough of her filters. I completely forgot about the balloons. And then uh, I tried uh, to I time it with yours. But oh, it was look! Too Confetti! Oh, Sorry. if you hold it up maybe long enough? I think mine still doesn't work because I'm pretty oh. sure Did I'm you like. update it? No, I'm pretty sure I'm running off like dial up or something. <laughs> like. <laughs> Who is confetti? Yay, yay. <laughs> and we're just celebrating. Oh, we're we're celebrating just celebrating everything over here. that's saying. Yeah. <laughs> we're just gonna be over here. Remember when like I was talking about something awful and we got a thumbs up? Yeah. Oh my god. That's honestly I I that's how we figured it out was I was at work and someone was working through probably the worst moment in their life and they were processing it. And they they were leaning on their hand like this and and then like they were crying and then and then that popped up and they were like what's happening yeah. and i was like i don't know and we were both like crying and laughing uh. <laughs> that's how therapy went that day um, well i mean i feel like that would be update. a pleasant little like giggle. it was it was a nice it was like well timed it was like definitely like a little i don't want like divine intervention kind of like little break before right. they went sure. back to processing but that was 
ridiculous. I was like, what an absurd way to figure out that there was an update that happened last night. Right. (laughs) Jenna, where can we sign up for your newsletter? It is linked in the description below. It's a little bit down, um, but if you sign up, you get a free short story. Um, It is a behind the scenes uh, situation from the Savior series. You'll like it. And it's told from Layla's perspective. It was something that I I mean, Delphi's perspective. You know what? I know my own character. <laughs> I know who they are. No, no. Uh, <laughs> you're like, no, no. And I was like, how dare oh, nay, nay. <laughs> it um, Delphi who's yes, the it's, it's all from is in Delphi's perspective. And I originally <laughs> wanted to put it in the Savior Sister, but the Savior Sister is told from Layla's perspective, so there's no way that she would have like it could have been in there, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um, I haven't been in here forever. How's Cliff? And how are you, of course? Um I am good. I have really big news coming soon. Hold on. Actually, let me check my email to see if it's... Okay. Well, it's you just, can you... say the first part of it. Right. What the fuck? Sorry. Um, I just got a big affiliate payout. Oh, nice. Ooh, nice. What a okay. wonderful... Like, usually emails are really scary to look at, but the past couple of weeks you've been checking your email and you're like, wow. Yeah. Good news. What's happening? Oh, God. <laughs> Okay, you guys, you guys have no idea the fucking unhinged, weird, um, I have some uh, sponsorship emails. I <laughs> Did, okay, were you guys here when I got the uh, the the? They wanted to sponsor me so I could provoke a mini cordless chainsaw. Oh, uh, <laughs> you can cut down your own trees to make your own book paper. I guess. Yeah, like I. I, I'm trying to figure out how that has anything to do with what you. I, I, the still my favorite one is the vagina vitamins solely because. What? Yeah, I don't know. Are they called vitamins? That's what I'm looking. <laughs> That's what they sh- how do you not? Right, they were called something like like you know like wellness love like something stupid oh, like that. You, know, and you gotta lean like, into it. Right, and oh, the thing is, that you typed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> He laid his head, he laid his head down and it's like right. He next wants to the it. vitamins. I was telling <laughs> I've told everyone since if they had called them vitamins, I would have accepted just so I could talk about vitamins. Yeah. But they didn't. They called it something like clean life. And and also like oh, what the fuck so kind dumb. of vitamins do you need for your vagina? You know, anywho, whatever. Um, so that was a weird one. But anywho, I just got another weird one and it was well, maybe I should actually like look at it and see. Yeah, look, know, look, like, look, look. Okay. Check, 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 because I'm curious to see if you can talk about it. Which, um, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a cleaner for metal. It's a metal cleaner oh. that also acts as an alarm clock. I don't hey. understand. <laughs> I don't and know. It can clean watches, metal parts, retainers, denture. <laughs> Wait, why like... are you gonna use metal cleaner on your teeth? Like on your teeth? Maybe if you have like one of those like what do, what do they call them when you have a metal tooth? What's uh, that called? Is that oh, a crown? Oh, oh. Crown? Yeah, yeah, but it's for dent I don't know. But anywho, well, that's the that's the most recent uh <laughs> can't stay on your work in progress. Here's a mini cordless chainsaw. You know what? <laughs> so how mini was the mini chainsaw? I didn't. I didn't see a picture. I just saw the. Word I'm just like this big, and it's kind of adorable. Right? Like, like it's on you, your keychain. Well, do you want to know butter? some dark history about the chainsaw? Yes. Always. Okay. So mm-hmm. the chainsaw started off as this like mini one that people would use to saw women's or people with pubic bones pubic bone so that they could give birth oh. um and then they were like wow this works so well and then they made big ones so whenever you're like it's these little mini chainsaws i'm like oh going back to our roots i see of women's torture i understand like I, 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 <laughs> i'm just sitting here like i shouldn't be surprised because i mean everything that's happened to women is like well yeah that tracks yeah well, what the fuck i don't know i swear it's like i feel like there's like a bunch of people that are crazy and then they do these experiments and then on the off chance it works and they're like yeah see this was worth it <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's that whole thing where it's like men don't like women like they just don't yeah. like it's just obvious at this point not not all men of course 
We love no. that. <laughs> yeah. We love uh, uh, Iona's man, and we love Clifford. Cliff. Speaking of, I totally got off topic. How how are all of us, and how is Cliff? Cliff is doing like health wise. He's doing amazing. He's doing really really great. He hasn't been having a lot of pain problems. Um, really his biggest cool. issues currently are PTSD, um, mm -hmm. which is to be expected after being hospitalized for two months. Mm -hmm. um, and he is in EMDR, which is a special kind of um, uh, movement kind of, kind of therapy. therapy. Yeah, that that yeah. Um, helps Head movement with and desensitization and reprocessing. Yes. So he's doing that and it is going well, but it's one of those things where it kind of gets worse before it gets better. So mm -hmm. some days he's like very like, oh, this is not fun. I don't like what's going on. And other days he's great. Um, mm -hmm. So right now he is napping because last night was tough for him. But he's, mm -hmm. he's snoozing. Um, I am doing good. I have a lot of really, really big news coming up. I've Totally didn't even tell Matt. So this is be news for you too. Uh, but I've told, if you guys have been here at past live streams, I've told you some of it. Uh, but the big news is I officially have an agent. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. um, her name is Sarah and I'm obsessed with her and I love her. And um, I, she is helping me with my secret project and she has been giving me updates about how that is going. And so far, everything she's doing, I'm just like, Sarah, I will marry you. Yes. <laughs> like you are amazing. From the fireworks. Right? <laughs> oh, like, here we go. Oh, yeah. I'll do, I'll do it for yeah. And oh, I can't, the only reason I'm not saying anything about the secret project yet is because I just want everything finalized in paper before I say everything yep. because I don't want to jinx it. Yep. Um, but yep. it should be, I'm hoping that that'll happen this week. So, um, very exciting stuff. Sarah's amazing. And I will eventually make a video, I think, about the query process that just to cool. give people an idea of what I went through, what is normal, what is not normal, because my query process was very abnormal. Um, and uh, uh, and I don't want to make people think that this is how it normally works when mm -hmm. it isn't. It was mm -hmm. a very unique situation for a multitude of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but to just give an idea of what I went through and maybe some of the experiences that I had that were uh, shitty and good signs that maybe certain agents are not, you shouldn't work with those mm -hmm. and you should mm -hmm. find one more like Sarah. Mm -hmm. I will, I will tell you the tea later, Matt. It's Iona already knows. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, but how are you? Now. Yeah, it's good now. I, we've got, we, we got, I've, I've got the agent of my dreams. Everything's great. And she's mm -hmm. wonderful. But the, right. the first couple meetings with other people were sure. bad special um oh. how are you two doing <laughs> asks elizabeth <laughs> um i have my gallbladder gone so that's exciting um and she's missing you, an organ she's, um yes i'm now missing an organ now i'm like matt where he doesn't have an appendix and i don't have gallbladder so that's very exciting um could you uh, yeah you're no, <laughs> please, please, no you should never have to go through that um could you got his tumor removed and okay. yeah on Friday, he got it removed, and he's doing just fine. Um, if anything, it made his eye like a little less like leaky, which is nice. And then I don't know. My first full day of like my first full week starts tomorrow, so I'm just like a little bit nervous about getting back into the groove because I've been healing for two weeks. But I'm sure it'll be fine. But so I'm just like a little antsy. And I recently got a second gallbladder, uh, courtesy of Iona. <laughs> Took me a second. I was like, "What?" So uh, recovering well from that. No. I lovingly gave Matt my yeah. gallbladder <laughs> that was filled to the brim with gallstones. I would just like, you know, it was just the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Right. I I was talking to my doctor and I was like, I wish I had gallstones, and they're yeah. like, Well, we know someone. <laughs> like, they are my pearl. <laughs> I'm glad you're cherishing them. Uh. But yeah, uh, things are going well for me. Uh, recently started therapy, which rocks. Uh, if you're thinking about it. starting therapy, do that. Yeah. Yes. Like, duh. Yeah, I love and, my therapist. Uh, yeah, other than that, I've just been chilling. The weather's great here in the lovely state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. And not over here in California, which you wouldn't, it's reversed. <laughs> yeah, it's you know? reversed. I'm over here on the east side being like, wow, it's 80 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> and the one in the hoodie under the cover is like, 
<laughs> I live in Cali. <laughs> You're like, it thunderstormed once. <laughs> what the fuck's happening? Yeah, I know. It's Meanwhile, fun. I like, oh my gosh, just recently there was an earthquake on the east side too. And it was just like, what the hell? But meanwhile, you go through that all the time. So it's yeah, crazy. it was so funny because everyone's freaking out over it, and we're just over here like. But then we have thunder and lightning, and we're all like, yeah. and everyone this on the east side like is angry. Yeah, it's just, it's just it's, uh, locations are strange. Wow, Letters. That's, that's all. That's all of your works. Those yes, are really thank you, cool. thank you. Denise. We're gonna get a good I haul. Yes, I ordered the Savior Champ for the Savior Sisters and shut up and write the book. And I can't wait until they arrive. I'm so, so thankful. Thank you. I'm so glad. I hope you enjoy them and love them. I was recently interviewed by the Smut Your Mouth podcast, and that should be coming out either this way Wednesday or next Wednesday, um, all about the Savior's Champion. And it was so much fun. I mean, like, it was... It, it's very... this. I don't even know why I'm bringing this up, but it just popped into my mind. Oh, no, it's so Savior's funny. Champion. But it, it was just funny because, like, usually when I do a podcast interview, I'm not, like, allowed to swear, which is totally valid. But this is a Smut Your Mouth podcast where, like, all they do is talk about dick and pussy. So, mm -hmm. like, and and we all have, like, the same sense like of humor. Yeah, the same sense of humor and the same opinion about smut and that, like, a lot of the stuff that a lot of people like in smut, we hate, like, the wet folds and the drooling pussy. Oh, what like, was it? The, they just did a meme about... um oh my gosh well, well, where it's uh the um oh my gosh pregnancy the, the oh, yeah. surprise pregnancy trope and they're like get it away yeah. like, it, it was really fun. so it was just fun talking with them because mm -hmm. we could make fun of the same stuff whereas usually when i talk to people who are into romance or anything that usually contains smut i'm always on the outs mm -hmm. and i'm always like the the, the non the lack of consent is gross so then other people are looking at me like i'm the weirdo like <laughs> you don't like rape what you don't like when people watch you sleep <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's so weird so anywho it was really really fun and Denise, you might not want to listen to the episode because there are tons of spoilers. Uh, but oh, yeah, don't listen. To everyone that. else, listen to it because it'll be fun, <laughs> and I'll of course share it when it comes out. How do we find Iona's crystal ball readings? Oh, you just go to www.creepycoreandfolklore.com, and you can. I'll try and type it out because it won't let me do it here, but it'll let me do it on my phone. And you can go to the crystal ball reading tab and see if you're interested in something like that. Yes. This is a great question for, uh, especially for Iona. Is there a way to write a person moving in a catatonic state after learning their adopted father killed their beloved family pet and falsely claiming it ate chocolate? Interesting. I, I think there might be a little confusion about catatonia. Mm -hmm. It's not. Uh, I would suggest. I don't think you can move in a catatonic state. Not you know? unless it's the wiggly kind. Um, yeah. But even then, that's not purposeful movement. Um, yeah. I would. It sounds like you're talking about. Maybe dissociative dissociation. Fugue. It's called yeah. a dissociative fugue. State, yeah, um, where someone will get kind of starey, or someone will do like a task while they kind of don't aren't fully mentally there. Yeah, but yeah. Um, if you look up dissociative fugue states, that might be something that you're interested in. Just be careful with the um, false information. Yeah, like and not sens not sensationalizing it. Yes. Um, yeah, catatonia, it, it like, like you said, unless it's the, the wiggly kind, mm -hmm. um, it, it very much is just like, okay. like, um, someone might get, it's typically an unusual position. Like, um, mm -hmm. I know somebody who was kind of stuck in like a flamingo, like on one leg pose. And then the person, like the doctors had to give them like some like muscle relaxants to force the muscles yeah. to it, unclench. It's like I mean, like, obviously I'm not the doctor here, but it's, I would liken it to being frozen almost. Yes. And you mm -hmm. can't just move in a cat catatonic state. No, so that's an apt comparison for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. So this does sound a little bit more like what you were saying. Some sort of yeah, dissociative fugue. Yeah. So, um, and then the way to write that, I would say is to research it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then do the thing. See if it works. Um, could you have an opening scene without dialogue? Yes. I feel uh, like that's more common. Yeah. I, I I mean, the opening scene of The Savior's Champion has no dialogue until, like, I mean, less, unless you count, like, I don't know, four pages in or something. Hmm. Uh, but, yeah. This, this, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Yes. Uh, Just, like, a green check mark appears. 
Right. <laughs> Wait, you can do one off. of these? Yeah. Yes. Yay! <laughs> Should we have a newsletter set up before we publish? Yes. I'm very bad about my newsletter. I was so good about it. I was doing it like weekly and then monthly. And now it's been a couple months, so I should probably update it. Yes, update it, <laughs> woman. But yeah, you should you should set up the newsletter like ASAP. Like set it up yesterday. Why have I never heard of vagina vitamins? Because they are not necessary and they are not a thing that people actually need. It's because you didn't take the sponsorship. That's yeah. Like, yeah. That's really that's why. Like, because Jenna didn't take the affiliate link. Right. <laughs> hey guys. But no, yeah, usually you don't kind do of. Do you need more in nutrients there. in your baby hole? Well, have I got the have I got the product for you? And I didn't understand. Are you supposed to put like are you supposed to eat the vitamin or like put it up there or something if you like, eat it that makes more sense to me. well i would fucking hope so <laughs> but like there are lots of people who tell you to put things up in there and you're like not really like super supposed to fun yeah. fact like though, uh, what's your name about Paltrow. like vagina juices is that <laughs> the only <laughs> other creature that can make it are sharks really oh. yeah it's like this um it's it's like this coating on the outside of a shark that helps them swim and it's, it's swimming vagina juice <laughs> oh my god the things we learn here guys we're here to educate you is yeah. vagina on the um on the bingo card poor matt Mark, no, i need to sign up mean. for vagina juice <laughs> <laughs> Don't I don't think pick. I have anything about <laughs> <laughs> oh, No, I think we only have peen on there. I don't think we yeah. have any vagina. We, we need stuff. to be more equal, okay, guys? Yeah. We've got peen on the bingo card. We need to put vagina juice on it. No, like, really, <laughs> we really don't need to. Um, <laughs> we really don't A need to. A separate do board that's just bodily fluid. Right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Have you ever had interest in making a graphic novel or comic? My answer is no. What about you, Iona and Matt? I think it would be cool, but no. I I, I, yeah, I'm kind of in the same vein of like, it would be cool. I know I don't have the skill set for it. Yeah. Like, I yeah. can't draw at all. And it's not like something where it's like, I could work at it and be good at it. No, I could not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I we just, all I saw how you drew. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> if you've been on a stream where I draw things. It's upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow Jenna was able to get what you were drawing. When you kept drawing uh, drawing microscope slides of things, you're like, this is, this is a cricket because it's the hair, the hair on its legs. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> When I tell you in school consistently, my lowest grades would be whenever I had to do an art class. And they'd always say at the beginning, they're like, we don't judge on quality. We grade based on effort. And then I'd yeah, turn them in. And they'd be like, this is terrible. You're clearly not trying. And I'm just sitting there like tears in my eyes. Like, I so am. <laughs> If it makes you feel better, Cliff took an art class in college, a painting class, because he had to take an art elective. Uh -huh. And he, you know, he's 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 an artist of words, not yeah. in music, not an artist of paint. And he had to like submit final projects and he he was working his ass off, but like on the struggle bus. So I did the last painting for him. And I'm I'm a well, okay, like I used you're to be a, like an you're artistic. Yeah, yeah, I used to be an extremely good artist. Like, that was what a lot of people thought my career path would be. But then, like, I took a break and to focus on writing. Mm -hmm. So I would say I'm, like, a decent artist at this point. I'm mm -hmm. better than most people, but I'm not professional level. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I'm a good amateur artist. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I had to, like, tone it down. And it was still, like, everyone was like, wow, that was, you improved so significantly. So <laughs> and he was like, uh, actually, I think I still have it. You know, during the, the sprint, remind me, and I'll go grab that. Okay, because like, it, it kind of reminds, I kind of want to see now of you and Cliff doing those couples painting I things. told him about that, but he oh. was like, we could not post it publicly. He goes, because I know mine will be horrible, and I would feel so embarrassed. That's like, what, no, but that's what everybody is. That's I what makes know. fun. Like, and everyone's just, just really really bad like there's always a one half of the couple that's like 
pretty decent. Like you can see what they're going for. And then there's this other app of the couple that's just like, <laughs> I, saw oh, no. was, I saw one where it was a lesbian couple and they were both fantastic. And it's like, oh, that's, that's the awesome. key. You have to be a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I told him that'd be so much fun to do, but he's like, no, I don't. He's like the shame he felt over his art in that art class. But I was oh. like, you know, it's, it's you can't not be good at everything. <laughs> right. You have, you have a beautiful voice. And when I sing, I sound like a dying cat. Like it's a give and take. You can okay? sing as a mouse really well so that's true that's good. i can do the mouse voice i can't remember if matt was here for that one <laughs> i, don't I so. sure wasn't oh <laughs> i can do that i can do that um the <laughs> mice from cinderella yeah, Hold yeah, on. Yeah. i have to take my headphones off hold on it's so good okay <laughs> okay <laughs> When you pass the sleep in dreams, you will lose your... I can't get it. I can't keep going. Okay. You get the idea. So when is that going to be on Spotify? <laughs> I used to be so much better at it, and then I lost mm. practice, and also my allergies, it makes it hard to do the nasal thing. But uh, there That's you go. Incredible. There's my mouth noise. The vibrato is what makes it. Okay. It's so good. It's spot on. Anywho, I'll find that. I'll find that painting. It's somewhere. Okay. My who hearts just thinking about that. Okay. Look, where was I? Let's see. Uh, oh, my my Jenna. I'm your Jenna, Loki Vanny. I can't stay, but I wanted to say I love you and I love your content. You've helped me so much with my writing journey. That is so Aww. sweet. Thank you so much. You look great, Iona. See, Thank I told you. you. Thank you. I was worried I'd get forehead comments, but I guess we're not doing that today. So Everyone knows, funny. okay? It literally is a thing. Or if you look at like some of the biggest supermodels of all time, they all have, have five, head? five heads. Yeah. Tyra really Banks. Like... It's it's oh, known it's really as a sign right. of regality. Okay. Yeah, it's really cool. Unfortunately, yeah. this doesn't apply to men, but it does <laughs> for women. What organ are you going to denigrate? Den denerate jesus fucking christ um uh i would love to donate my uterus seriously like i have no need for it yeah i have absolutely no need for it and everything that it does for me is fucking useless so i would love to donate my uterus to someone it does who keep you from having heart attacks is that really a thing yeah because estrogen helps you not have heart attacks and your uterus can i just take estrogen Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> There's a pill for that. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just, uh, yeah, I, I don't want it. And there there have been times where I was like, hysterectomies don't sound that bad. I mean, I know mm -hmm. they kick you into early menopause, but mm -hmm. whatever. Okay. Anywho, that's what I'm donating. Uh, how would you describe a spicy kissing scene, but from an outside perspective? How, I, for example, how would you describe someone witnessing a couple making out in the back? What of are the they car? doing watching someone making out? <laughs> <laughs> We're like, Maybe oh, they're a voyeur. Are they a voyeur? Like, yeah, um, they voyeur? I fucking hope so. Otherwise, this is just weird. I would say describe it briefly, just one sentence. Because okay. anything more, unless they're a voyeur and this is supposed to be someone who's like jerking off while they're watching them, then yeah. you could go into detail because we already know that it's some kink Freak shit up. going on here. Mm -hmm. But if it's not a kink, then you, you one sentence or all, unless the character is going to be. I totally should have gone the kink route. I totally assumed that it was non consensual from the get go. Oh, well. <laughs> I, I, see, I thought it was a case of them just like walking by and they happen to look into a car and just be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like that's where my head went. Happening. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If if it's if it's uh um uh if it's like a voyeur situation, then you can go into detail and you, but the thing is is they're not experiencing the kiss, so you can only I would focus more on what the hands are doing, like their hands crawled up each other's backs and through their hair, because they can't they can't see what's going on in the mouth. They can't be like their tongues played together unless they're like kissing like this, like you know. <laughs> so uh you just you I would focus on the hands and the body language that she straddled yeah. his waist and that kind of shit. Um yeah. but if it's not a voyeur situation, it is just like my friends were making out in the back of my car. I would be like, they they kissed passionately and left it at leave it at that. Unless you want the character to be a weirdo, um, that's totally where I was going with it. But I always go like dark. I think <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like 
So it's the it's basically what's his face from you, um, Joe from you. Oh, I, I thought you meant me. No, no, what's no. a face from from no. you as in me? And I was like, what are you trying to? You're say? like first you correct my short story, <laughs> and now you're telling me I'm a weirdo. <laughs> I want to just drop from the call. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, yeah. But I mean, like, I have a kind of similar scene where in The Savior Sister where Layla witnesses a sexual act that she does not want to see. And I just describe it starting and then her being like, no. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> I don't see anything. No. Nope. Oh, it could be, too, like, depending on, like, uh, the tone of what's going on. Or, like, the person feels like a third wheel, or they have those, like, really cringy couple-y friends. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, they're doing it again. Like, it's yeah. Kind of like, yeah. And that would be fun. I think I think it depends on how the outside person yes. is yeah. experiencing this. Yeah. Could put a fun... Because it... if it's a really passionate kiss, but they're like, oh, they're... you could be like, uh, yeah. they kissed, they're a sloppy kiss with, like, too many noises, and mm-hmm. I just rolled my eyes, and, uh, like, you know. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to become writers? I've wanted to be a writer since I was six. We used to write books in my first grade class Mm -hmm. and out of construction paper. And I was hooked since then. What about you two? Thank you. Um, I've been writing since I was teeny tiny, but it's also totally valid if someone decides they want to be a writer later. There's nothing that's like better or worse about either of those things um, because it's a skill that you can hone. But I started writing, like, loop-de-loops and, like, a composition notebook because of, like, Harriet the Spy would, like, write in her little composition notebook. And I would do that about the alley cats that were next uh, like next door, and I would watch the alley cats. And Aww. then I'd give it to an adult and be, like, read my creation. Um, and I did, like, dramas where it's, like, Tom Cat cheated on his wife <laughs> with the other cat. Like, there was stuff going on at home. But I think that... <laughs> They were able, they were like, it says loop de loop, scribble, scribble. Like, no, you clearly don't have the vision that I do. <laughs> <laughs> Just a heads up, your mic is getting stuck in your shirt. Oh, thank you for telling me that so I don't scratch everybody's ears. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, and then, you, yeah, uh, similar to these two, uh, I was like, I was young and got like a elementary school assignment where they're like, write a book. And I did that. And oh. I was like, this is awesome. Right. I'm going to do this forever. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Speaking of, do you have an anticipated <laughs> date range for your publication? Uh, when non-writing life gets easier. Um, yes. <laughs> that might never happen, Related. but I believe yeah. in you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're major wait and see on that mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. I get that. That's I really fair. get that. Hey, the Savior's Champion took me two years. The Savior's Sister took me two, uh, like a year and eight months. Mm-hmm. The Savior's Army has taken me four years because mm-hmm. of life not being easy. So mm-hmm. I, I totally... That's how life's I am a little about... in the way at the moment. Right. But uh, yeah, we're Prince working through it. has taken me four years. And I mm-hmm. hope to get it out this year. But also, like, I don't know if that'll be possible because mm-hmm. of health reasons. But yeah. maybe this year will be different, I say, at the beginning of every single year. Yeah. <laughs> Have you thought of making the Savior's Champion into a movie series? I would totally watch it. Um, well, that's one of the... I don't really think about that. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, someone said something weird in the comments. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was I going to... Okay. Yeah, movies. Um, that's, that's not really something I think about because it's not really something that's in my control. Like, it's, it's up to movie execs and things like that to want to uh, produce a book. And less than a percent of books ever get adapted into TV or film. So it's not very realistic. However, I will say that I am proud to say that I was produced produced i was um approached approached i know words by it has a, the same sounds but yeah i was approached by a, a pretty successful um movie producer they had produced the they produced a bunch of stuff but the only one i can remember is the dallas fires club which was a big mm. deal and was a, a nominated for a ton of awards and they had uh discussed with me the potential of turning um the savior series into a tv series uh but then they it didn't go through obviously they That's were like common. which is um the but fact not that common i common being approached though yes the, the fact that i was even approached i'm just like put that on my tombstone because that happens mm-hmm. to less than a percent of authors so mm-hmm. i will i will take it as a win um so maybe one day i'll be approached again who knows but i'm not holding my breath 
I didn't know Jenna is child free. Um, has Butters has only child syndrome, so it makes sense. It's so funny because imagine having this platform for 10 years, and then I'm like, by the way, I have five children. <laughs> <laughs> there have been a lot of people doing that lately. Apparently, after COVID, there have been a lot of people who have had babies and they just kind of never tell anybody about it. Yeah, okay, which is well, that's fine. not me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not me. I would like literally pregnancy is my worst nightmare. And I've act had actual nightmares where I'm pregnant. And I'm like, what do I do? When did this happen? Yeah. Yeah. Get this out of me. Someone, someone help me. So yeah, and at, uh, totally, you know, every to each his own. And I, you know, obviously, I own as a mother, and I think she's a wonderful mother. I'm the uh, only one in my friend group that wanted to have kids and have a kid. That's it. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I just am, I'm not, uh, okay, I'm just not into children. Hold on. Totally I am, okay, sorry, I'm getting caught up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was literally typing out the same thing as me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry guys. Sidebar. Um, approached. Um, okay. Approached. Let's see. Let me let me catch up. We were just catching up on some weirdness. Um, you can keep your ovaries, so no early menopause, and still have the hysterectomy. I'm living proof as of December. Ten oh, out of ten. That's okay. First of all, that's amazing. But I kind of want to get rid of the ovaries too, just because I've had an ovarian cyst before and it was wow, extremely it painful. Yeah. You know. But but yeah. Uh, you know, I, but I'm also scared of doctors. So it's like, I've, I get so it. Many, I get it. Uh, the character accidentally walked in, then it should only be a sentence. If they accidentally walked in and then they're like describing this like massive kissing, then it just sounds like they actually walked in and they're standing there like this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'll leave when they tell me to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry <laughs> april's comment was funny about your website she got scared by the ghost on your website what ghost <laughs> on my website there's a ghost on your website what? oh <laughs> on the main page on the main page oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like, what? i'm like, like is what? it a legitimate ghost what, what? are you talking about <laughs> like, jenna's no children is Sorry. her TSC, that's okay, TSC and TSS characters. I would say my, I call them my book babies. I wouldn't say the characters are my children. I get really weirded out. I get really weirded out by a lot of authors' relationship with their characters. I get mm. weirded out when they call their characters their children because mm. it's like, especially because like, They'll if you kill write, them and stuff too. So you it's kill like, them what and you doing? write sexy characters. So I like sexualized my children. Like I, yeah. like, I fully describe a blowjob in the Savior's Army. So, like, I just watched, I just wrote my two children sucking each other. Like, you know, it's just weirds me out. And yeah. but then it also grosses me out when when writers thirst for their own characters mm -hmm. and will talk like call them their like I I write all my book boyfriends and I'm just like. This is something oh, I would like a self fulfilling like yeah, fantasy. That is something that you like. You couldn't torture that information out of me. <laughs> I get off to the men that I write. It's just that's just fucking that's gross. Also, that's like a really common thing that people think about. Like it's a um, about romance a writers. stereotype mm -hmm. about romance writers that they try and like mm -hmm. dissolve. And so then to have a couple people doing that is kind of weird. Yeah. And it's like, and I, and don't get me wrong. Like when I write a romance, I want people to ship the couple. I want people yeah. to be like, I love them together. Mm -hmm. But, and, and obviously I ship them cause I wrote them together, but mm -hmm. I'm not there going like, Ooh, Tobias, you fine. Right. You're my motor running. It's like, that's really weird. And I don't like it. But then at the same time, I'm like, rock a Tobias. Like, it's just, you know, Those so are very cool. I, I would say well, my like, books are my babies. What you were describing reminds me of that. There was this like, I don't know. I'm from like a really, 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 really small town. And I still live in a small town, but it was even smaller and very rural. And there was like this town heartthrob because he could like play a couple chords on the guitar and could sort of sing not that well. Um, yeah. But he did like these like um, photos, uh, like just like the promo photos or whatever. And on Facebook, because that's of course where everything happens, there were all these like, 
like I think he was like maybe 20 or 21 at the time and there are like women in like their 40s and 50s being like oh don't do this to my poor old heart and it reminds me of that where they're just like publicly thirsting yeah right but yeah it, it, it's it, the allosexuals need to have an ounce of pride <laughs> Sorry, people were asking in Cyborg Central about the weirdness, and I am updating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anywho, okay, let's see. Uh, I had a question lined up, but now I... What is wrong with me? Let's see. Where did it go? Am I stupid? Oh, it was right above it. Okay. Um <clears throat> Hey, Jenna, I'm publishing my first novel, and I was wondering how do I write a sex scene for my young adult novel without going into too much detail or fading to black? First of all, I recommend reading... Oh, God, there's this one young adult book that I read that sucked, but it was a great mm. example of how you should write a young adult sex scene, which is that it's usually just a paragraph, and mm. no body parts are described. I, I call them the exploring each other's body scene because that's usually what they say. They say, we explored each other's bodies and mm. it felt so amazing to be with this person that I connected with so much. You, j It's just all about the emotional emotion of the moment. And like, we undressed each other, kissed each other all over. See, like it's vague. I'm not saying like, they grabbed my titties and then stuck their dick in me, you know, like, you, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you would say, you, I mean, you'd say it nicer, but you'd say stuff like that in an adult book. There's usually no mention of genitals or anything like that. It's just like, we undressed each other. Uh, they left kisses along my flesh and I had goosebumps and I was nervous but excited and we explored each other's bodies and it's just very focusing on the emotion of the moment and no specific, you know, not these kind of descriptions. Yeah. What say you two? Because they're kids. I, yeah. I think, well, okay. So I get a little passionate about it because I work with all ages and teens are some of the most preyed on population. Um, and there's a lot of sexualization for teens. And it's always been that way, um, unfortunately. But better not to add to it. So writing a scene where it's like kind of alluded to or behind closed doors or like what you're talking about where it's like oh I'm connecting because a lot of teens experience sex so it's, I'm not saying never ever write about it but just being careful that you're not putting more pressure on teens to be sexual and like portraying I don't know continuing that portrayal of, of teens and yeah I would just say same type stuff like they're they're kids so mm -hmm. yes yeah. uh if you're gonna write it it's about the feelings, not the action. Mm -hmm. You know, because, it, be very yeah. introspective with this, right. not outrospective. There was a YA book I read um, by. You're Christelle. doing the mic thing again. Oh, I'm sorry. Shit. I even <laughs> moved. I even moved the mic to be my computer, but it didn't work. Okay, I'm gonna. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I read this really good book um, by Crystal Maldonado, and I talked about it last time. It's um, Fat Chance Charlie Vega. Um, and she like has this like mini because it's a romance, but also like a kind of finding yourself and being comfortable in your own skin kind of thing. And so she was like, um, they were kind of in this argument and she's like, I wish I would have known that, like, or I wish I wish you would have told me how you felt before we were together. Like it was like alluded to, like she didn't say like before we fucked or something <laughs> crazy. Like it was just like, it's like before we were together. And there was like a little bit of like this, like I felt really beautiful and like the lingerie I picked out or like the underwear I picked out or something like that. But it was like very tame. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in how that was written, then you can check out um, Fat Chance Charlie Vega. Cause I think that one was really well done in my opinion. Yeah. And I just feel like, keep in mind that like, if you do write all the full details of stuff, it, you're, it's like writing, I mean, like, it's not this extreme, but to, it's like, it's, it's continuing like, that, yeah. porn, you know, it is, right. it's continuing that, that pressure, sexualization of it's that sexualization kids. of teens yeah. Right, yeah, and their kids. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> good afternoon, Jenna. I hope you all are having a good week. I submitted my art to an art exhibit that is taking place in my hometown. It's the first time I submitted my art in years. That is fantastic. Congratulations. Um, I'm writing for fun, not to publish. Any tips on good places to share it and get opinions? Um, I mean, if you're doing it for fun, well, first of all, if you're doing it for fun, you don't have to share it with anyone and you don't have to get opinions because you're mm -hmm. not doing it to get published. So keep in mind that if you do share hobby writing, um, a lot of the opinions might be based judging you against published work. And so just take the opinions with a grain of salt because I don't know, for me, if I'm doing something for a hobby, then other people's opinions don't matter. It's just mm -hmm. for shiggles. Um, but mm -hmm. I, most people that I see who write stories for fun, either post them on their website or like through a platform like Wattpad, something like that, mm -hmm. Tumblr or something like that. Mm -hmm. What say you two? Um, I'm trying to think of hobby writing and like meeting community that way. Um, I w yeah, I would suggest staying away from whatever their opinion is but maybe more so focusing on the connection of other hobby writers is maybe what you're looking for and i think um wattpad ao3 gosh i'm bad at this um but other places where you can do like fan fiction but you can also share your own original work oh, blogs are a good one that people will share their hobby writing with um and connect with other people so that can be something that where you can share your work and get feedback of that kind of story. Uh, another option, uh, which I don't know exactly how common this is, but mm -hmm. uh, I know I've been to a couple uh, that were put on by my university that mm -hmm. I attended. But you have like uh, like open mic nights, basically, and like mm -hmm. like cafes or like like a university or a library or something like that, mm -hmm. and uh, people go and read their works. Uh, you'll see it more often with like poetry and stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, you can see it with like short stories as well. If that's, that's something that might be uh, up your alley. Yeah. Love that. Very helpful. Um, someone's saying like, that's the precisely the answers I'm looking for. Well done. And I can't even remember what the question was. I think it was um, about um, writing sex scenes. I'm almost positive. Oh, but, yeah, okay. I think so. I wish there were more awkward sex scenes and not hot ones for teens because this is more realistic. I was about to be like, I write a, a sex scene that starts off awkward but then gets hot. No, we're frozen. Oh, no. Hold on. Maybe Vinny. Carson's back there. Sometimes if I hold these. Out late on freezes. No. <laughs> Are you back? Hello? Hello? We can hear you, but we can't see you. Oh, okay, there, there we go. go. Okay, I just switched my <laughs> internet. Our internet here is really shitty, and we need to call them to, like, fix it. And that's Cliff's job, and he just hasn't been well enough. Oh, hello. Hello. Come, here. Come say hi. Come say hi. Hello. Hi. Oh, yes. Butters is here to give her kisses. She was glued to me all night. She was spooning with me all night, and then Aww. at one point she just laid on top of me and was she's sleeping so on me. Yeah. So she she knew I had a bad day yesterday, so she's like, "It's okay, Mama. I'll mm -hmm. be here." Look at her; she's standing on my arm like a like a bird. <laughs> she's she's perched. Yeah, perched she does this when go. she wants attention. She will just stand on my arm and stare at me. Yes, you are the princess. So you are. But anywho, yeah. So um, in, in the in the Savers Army, I have a couple of sex scenes that start off funny awkward like it's like it, it's designed to make you laugh um but then end hot okay so i promise like because because it, it is for adults and they are adults but i think even as adults the first time with like well tobias and layla are virgins so there's that the first action. time with each person like each the first part, part time partner. with a new partner is still can be awkward you yeah. know like you don't like sometimes people are into stiff stuff that you're not into and it's just weird mm -hmm. There she is. Is she doing the thing? Does this count? Yes, she's doing. Okay, the thing. good. She's doing the thing. She's sitting up on her back legs, and she's putting her. Little Sometimes, paws whenever she puts her little paws on top, I think she's like leaning on you, like no, like you're a little like walking cane thing. But she's, she she's, she's got good. her paws crossed and everything. Yes, she's butter. Good. She's like, I'm here to be a model. I'm. She's model. doing great. You're also, so your um future work is going to have some awkward sex scenes too. Which one? I think the one where, well, the, I'm going to just use the tropes, the grumpy sunshine one, 
where okay. it's like, oh, you were... Well, it's more so awkward before, and then yeah, when they have yeah. sex, it's fantastic. But okay, yeah, yeah, good. okay, so, oh my gosh, I kind of want to say what happened. I know, I do too, because especially with the, like, ugh, I think you should say it. Okay, it's it'll be a long time from now, but basically yeah. I have one character who is Grey Ace and thus, like, not super in touch with her sexuality, mm-hmm. and when she does find herself sexually attracted to someone else, she doesn't know what to do, so her friend is like, just seduce him. So all day she's trying, and he's not getting it at all because... Mm-hmm she's not doing a good job and then so (laughs) bedtime comes around and she wears something a little not something overt like she's not showing up in a teddy but she's wearing Mm -hmm. like silk camisole and a silk little shorts and she's Mm -hmm. like all right i'm going to bed Mm -hmm. and he's like okay good night and then she's just like (laughs) and she and she gets in bed and she just rolls over and then and he's kind of like He's not a full on himbo, he's but not. he has himbo leanings, you know? Yeah. Himbo, leanings himbo light. And so he it's finally registers and he goes like, Wait, were you trying to hit on me? And then she like basically cocoons herself under the bed and is humiliated. And she's like, <laughs> No, no, I'm so embarrassed. But he's like, This is great, let's do it, you know. So he like Wait, calls doesn't he fall and- down. No, that's the next morning. Oh, that's the next morning where he's like, dee, 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 play. Yeah. Uh, uh, he, <laughs> so, so he like gets under the bed and makes her feel like he's like, it's okay, it's fine. And then they do the do. And then the next morning, you know, she's like, like, you know, he's making breakfast for her and everything. And then she's like, I'm going to get in the shower. And he goes, okay, like, like have a good shower and she's like that was an invitation and then she goes and he's like frantically like getting <laughs> the money after and falls and then writes himself and everything so it's gonna be cute i think it's cute i love that kind of stuff me too. um I, for me the i mean and i know i'm in the minority here but for me the romantic tension and the banter is way more important than the smut Mm-hmm. But if like, like I've read plenty of books that don't have any smut at all. And I still really love them because the, te- the banter and the romantic tension was on point. Like that's what matters the most to me. And I think smut can be great and like, wow, the smut was really well done, yeah. but I've read more bad smut than good smut. So I'm kind of like, I, I mean, obviously I plan on writing sex scenes and stuff. So there will be smut in my books, but I'm trying to basically rectify, like, this is the opposite of so much of what I've read about mm. wet folds and wh- okay matt you might not know this but you would not know how many books i've read that describe <laughs> the the liquids that come out of genitals as like his drooling cock <laughs> like drooling <laughs> like, like why is that the word <laughs> just to to immediately <laughs> associate it with food it's just uh, drooling mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. like what the is like, happening it's what no one's making you write that you know like <laughs> your editor is definitely gonna go uh i think you mean drooling <laughs> like that didn't happen it's, i just read so many bad yeah. and so like I, there have been some books that i enjoyed despite the smut but then there have been some books will just flat out like because of the smut the book was terrible because of drooling drooling and stuff like, uh, like i'm thinking of like a bulldog that oh, there's awesome. another one. Exactly. No. Weeping. Weeping no, is didn't. another one that I see a lot. Drooling no, they didn't. and weeping. Weep. Also Sorry. dribbling. Gushing. Oh, and you know what another oh. one? Another one that I saw so often that I thought it was a meta like because it makes no sense. So I thought it was a metaphor for something else. But no, a lot of people say hit like splash like if the guy comes it splashes <laughs> and like i'm like shamu yeah. <laughs> I'm like, have you ever seen a dick like a splash like is she the little mermaid just like in jizz like uh, i want to go uh. the penises like it's just it's so gross and this is like <laughs> i'm thinking like a sunny d commercial <laughs> Like, <laughs> me a weeping body part other than eyes needs Anna. Yeah, like, exactly. Exactly. are your genitals sad <laughs> they're grieving <laughs> they're grieving 
grieving how they've been written. They're like, right. oh, I want to be in this book. But yeah, I, I read a lot of shit like this. And so for me, it's like, it, it, like I'm, I'm not saying this to be like, you know, like an anti-smut or anything. I'm like, sex scenes are great. You're clearly like, you know? not anti-smut. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, can we just do better? <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to do with my books. I promise there's no weeping unless someone's crying. And they, that won't happen in the bedroom. I mean... Unless maybe they're just lying in bed sad. Okay, then there's no drooling unless someone's sedated. <laughs> I don't know. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, anywho. Amazing. The cover for Ashes is so pretty and I showed it off to all of my friends and they all agree. Isn't Aww. that sweet? Thanks, I love Rory. that cover. That's oh, so nice. It is pretty. Unfortunately, nice, the cover yeah. artist was a douche, but... Yeah, it's a it's a whole, like, scammy situation. Well, not scam, scam, but it they do the little secret trick. Unethical. Unethical, unethical. And so, yeah, I wouldn't suggest the cover artist, but thank you for liking the cover, um, and I'm glad that your friends like it, too. Yes. It may just be because I'm a lesbian, but what are a lot of straight authors on <laughs> when write? I'm not going to lie. I've read some written by queer oh. people. I know of a one written mm-hmm. by um, a lesbian lady, and it was very, very bad. Very so. problematic, very um, um, dubious predatory. consent. Yeah, dubious and consent. so unfortunately, I I didn't even mean to click on this, but I did. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, um, it isn't delegated solely to the straights, um, unfortunately. But... It, I think it's just a lack of, I think I think not enough people like put a mirror and look down there, um, maybe or, or understand what like healthy uh, relations positions look like. Okay, war is I accidentally pulled this one. Out. War is has always been violent and full of death. Do you write the war in a couple of chapters, following different characters from start to finish, or just do it in one giant chapter? I have no idea because I don't know the context of your story. I don't know what your story is about. Um, I've never seen an entire war written in one chapter because wars usually last multiple years. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't really help you, but it does sound, and, and yeah, I have no idea. I don't know if you're writing a book that's dual point of view. Um, I don't know if, or, or multi point of view. And if you're not, then having um, different characters doesn't make sense. Like there's mm-hmm. so many elements that go into this. So yeah, we'll say you too. Um, I think, if you wanted to talk about the effects of it, like maybe it's something that's ended, but that's something that lingers, like the effects of it lingers for a long time, you could make, but that would still be spread throughout your world. I don't know. It just depends on your book. It depends on your story. And you're the when like as the author of this story, then it'll be good whenever you flesh it out a bit more and see what fits best. Yeah, we just unfortunately don't have enough context to mm-hmm. yes. properly answer this. There isn't enough wine for this chat. I am completely sober, so clearly you are just not on my level. Okay. Um, all right, let's go ahead and uh, start our first sprint. What is everyone working on? I will go first. I am working on my newsletter. Uh... <laughs> I just saw it. I own it. I'm always worried it's me. Sean, you could never. <laughs> I could never. Yeah. Uh. Um, so I'm working on my newsletter, but I'm also going to see if I can find that painting. <laughs> but I, <laughs> what about you two? Um, I'm going to be working on Birch. Um, I am really, really polishing it up. So I hope to get it through one more critique partner once it's polished before I send it to you, Jenna, so that it's not <laughs> miserable. Um, and uh, But that's what I'll be working on is Birch. I'm just churning away at uh, some edits. I'm Yay! Excited. I love edits. I'm so jealous that you're <laughs> at the edits. Jeez. Okay. All right, guys. We're going to be setting the timer for 20 minutes. Per usual, it will be muted. If you want to listen to music, play your own goddamn music. Um, I will be listening to Butter's song, the song of Butter's people. I hear you. Who you're barking at? She just growls. She's like, I'm barking, I'm barking at someone. Okay. Um, oh, listening to the audio book. Shut up. I'm right the book. Fantastic. Okay, guys, we're setting the timer. Three, two, one, go.
All right, folks, how did everyone do? I finished half of my newsletter and I probably would have done more, but I can't, I don't know what else to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I need two more things to talk about. Hi, puppies. What about you, Matt? Uh, I a little bit forgot where I was. I uh, <laughs> was just fully into it. Uh, let's see, what was I doing? Uh, I edited about five pages. Nice. That's a lot. Yeah, like I was like flying focused. through it. Flying through it, and Iona disappeared. Oh no. How did everyone else? Oh my goodness. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Hope you'll keep going since I'm just getting started for the night. Yes, we will be here for another hour and a half. Thank you, writers. Hello, Iona. Welcome back. Welcome back. Sorry, I ran and got a snack, but I totally turned on the camera. <laughs> so I guess Kachu turned it off, or like vice versa. <laughs> I turned it off so you wouldn't have to watch me walk around in my pajamas. But... And then Kachu was like, "No, <sighs> I got oh no, we think it, we think it was cranberry." Someone said, uh, "Someone said in the comments, cranberry." <laughs> uh, of course, it was cranberry because cranberry is the one who unmutes me. I got to stop leaving my. <laughs> <laughs> it was cranberry who did it. Kachu was like, "Yeah, okay," like he's just here, like, mm -hmm. "Yep, it was probably me." Meanwhile, cranberry can't even see her. But. <laughs> I found the painting. It's dirty as fuck. But keep in mind, I kept it extremely simple because I was trying to make it believable. <laughs> but everyone in the class was like, wow, you really like improve. So I don't think they believed it. But oh, oh I really like yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Uh, I did, really I just, good. I just did the blending and everything. Yes. <laughs> It's not really good. But I, was I was waiting like, for it simple. to be like actually simple, but yeah, like it's... if I had turned that in for one of my art classes, they would have probably arrested me. <laughs> I was like, I'm keeping mm -hmm. it simple. And it was so funny because Cliff had to present them. They're like, that one's really good. And he was like, Yeah, I started to get the hang of it. <laughs> That's really cool. But it, it, it I I offered because he was really struggling and he had to paint like three paintings in one day. So I was like, Oh my god. Yeah, I'll help you. He <laughs> Art is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but if you just blend the colors, you can make something pretty. Because that's all it is. I just started with black and then blended up into red. You and... started with black. That's hard to start with black. Yeah, like you, it's all it's all dirty now, so it's like looks gray. But there was black at the bottom, and then I went up to the that's red. Awesome. And that's really you know. pretty. I think it's Thank pretty. You. Thank you. I thought it was pretty too, but then Cliff accidentally got paint smudges on it. I was like, you know, we could have hung this, <laughs> <laughs> but no. <laughs> you had to meddle in your own project right bob ross would be proud thank you thank you uh art is friggin hard in any medium mm -hmm. it depends it's like a skill it's like a yeah. skill you have to hone skill your poo poo look at butter she's so happy hello mm -hmm. Does anyone have questions, guys? It's time for questions. I completely forgot about games. Maybe we could play games after. I the totally next pre came up with two truths and a lie. So okay, well maybe after the next sprint we can do games. I don't think I have any prepared, and I didn't tell anything to Matt, so he will not be. I prepared. can make something up. I'll, <laughs> I'll just do uh, three lies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wrote down a note for something that I. Uh, <laughs> if you saw this note, I wrote down a note for things that. Um, uh, I could potentially, uh, what's it called, um, come up with. And it's just so funny because if you saw what the note is, it's like, it's ridiculous. But if I tell you what the note is, then you'll know. Don't tell, the, yeah, don't tell yeah. us what the note is. Well, you, you can tell us afterward. Okay. I just saw it. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. What exactly is a butter sploot? Um, a sploot in general, it's not something that is exclusive to butters, but it's when a dog lays flat and their legs are out like that yeah there's like, like they behind splatted them, like yeah yeah and butters does that all the time um okay <sighs> all right i'd be interested to know if any of you have used 
or have an opinion about the Save the Cat writes a novel method. I'm really stuck on my ending and their five point finale is pretty extensive. Mm. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind that you don't have to follow any of these structures. The only structural method that you really have to follow to a T is Freytag's pyramid, which is mm. inciting incident, rising action, climax, falling action, resolution. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only one that you like it's mandatory pretty much. Mm -hmm. All these other structural things are just there to help you. So if the five point finale and saves the cat isn't working for you and you can only think of three points, then only do three points, you know? Yeah. It's there to help. It's not there to say, you must do it this way or you will be arrested. Um, like for example, in Shut Up and Write the Book, I show my usual structural method and that's my usual method. And if I were to write a book and something in that structural method doesn't work, I'm ditching it. And that's my method, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, it's not law is what I'm trying to say. What say you two? I was just thinking about um, how a lot of the times I'll use half, like I'll start off with the um, snowflake method and then I'll do the second half of my own um, my own method that I came up with, just that just works for me. And even then, like there are some times where with um, the snowflake method where I'm just like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Like that's not necessary for my story because it's not supposed to be like a one size fits all. It's supposed to be like a jumping off point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, I'm trying to think of like a metaphor here. It's like uh, they're like floaties you know they're helpful when you're learning how to swim but once you've swam a bunch you don't necessarily need these like more like specific structures as long as you're like jenna said following the pyramid mm -hmm. not you're, drowning you're good. yeah as long like as, as long, like, as you're, as long as you're following the pyramid your head is above water mm -hmm. and you are treading water so mm -hmm. you know just whichever stroke you use is up to you just keep swimming there we go. <laughs> Just keep going. Okay. Do you have any tips for writing a himbo character without making them too dumb or insufferable? I feel like if they are too dumb and insufferable, then they're not a himbo. That like totally defeats the purpose of a himbo. Mm. A himbo is threefold. They are beefy. They are um, they are sweet, and they are kind of dumb. Um, uh, uh, someone can be a himbo and not be like book dumb. They could just be like, you know, they're, they're usually himbos are just a little clueless. Like they're just a little like mm -hmm. they're not getting the social cues and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, a great example of this would be like George of the Jungle. He's not mm -hmm. an inherently stupid man. He's mm -hmm. just very clueless He's to how the world, you know? Yeah. So it's not like the, like, for example, that's why I said like my character has himbo leanings because the stuff that he's good at he's like really really good at he just has moments of like shiny things you know he has mm -hmm. he has adhd energy <laughs> so you know he just has has those moments you know so i think that um i i think getting a better understanding of himbos would be helpful and maybe reading more and seeing what works mm -hmm. i love a himbo character um if you want to watch some movies or tv shows that have him good himbos uh that there was that one movie with sandra bullock and um the guy who looks like a thumb channing tatum um oh <laughs> tell me i'm wrong tell me i'm wrong oh god you're not I don't remember the one with sandra bullock and um let me let me find it. uh uh yeah it just came out not that long ago yeah um, like oh. the lost city or something the lost city oh, thank yeah. you okay. yeah the lost city Channing Tatum plays a great himbo in that. And you see that he's he's kind of dumb, but he's so lovable and sweet, you know? And yeah. he, like, really cares about her. And then... Um, Terry from Brooklyn Nine-Nine is a good himbo. Yes! I, I thought you were saying Channing Tatum's name is Terry. I'm no. Like, <laughs> and a lot of people bring up Kronk, and Kronk yeah. is a good one from The Emperor's New Groove. Mm -hmm. Um I know um, there's, a lot of there's good this one young adult show that I can't remember what it was called, but it was about a girl who's dead and she meets a bunch of other ghosts and she's trying to figure out how she died. She's in high school mm. and she was murdered and she's trying to solve her murder and she can't leave her high school because that's where she was murdered. And one of the ghosts is an 80s jock who <gasps> died oh, oh is it wait is it the one where she no wait she goes back in time no that's no. a totally different one that's no. a totally different one yes uh, i know what you're talking about uh, too, but no. yes oh i don't um, know hold on let me think of and i, I it, it's really cute okay hold on show where teen girl 
is a ghost and haunts her high school. Let's see. School spirits. School spirit. That's a clever okay. name. Right. That okay. Is, like it's on two thumbs up. Netflix. <gasps> and her- I didn't know it was on Netflix. Well, now I'm gonna add it to my Netflix. It is thing. so cute. And this is coming from me who does not like young adult. Yeah, you don't content. like young adult stuff very much. Um, it is fucking adorable. And her love interest, I was so, so I was like, please let him be the love interest the minute he was introduced because he's a himbo. Uh, I love himbos. Um, his name, he's played by uh Milo Manaheim or Manheim, who I guess is like really popular right now. Like people are obsessed with him for some reason. I think he's gonna he's he's doing something with him. Really- who are they obsessed with? Milo Manheim. I don't know, but he's, I keep seeing him in my Instagram theme feed right now. Something big is going on with him. Um, but anywho, he plays in a, a ghost who died in the eighties, who was an eighties jock named Wally. And he's a himbo and he's adorable and so sweet. And he's like, not a stereotypical, he's not a mean jock. He's like mm-hmm. a, a himbo sweetie, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's a great one. And I was just like, yay, kiss, you know? So, okay. <laughs> I could go on this forever. Okay. Um, what is the best software to save your manuscript on? Microsoft is the worst. Um, I use Microsoft Word. I'm sorry. I, I, it's my favorite. So I think it's the best. I, I have what Google about you Docs and then uh, convert oh. it to Microsoft Word to like have it saved somewhere that's not a cloud-based thing. Yeah, because that's what I used to love Google Docs um, like so much. Like I, because I was like, I can edit it anywhere. And I lost like so much of my work on that. And I was like, shit. So um, I went to Microsoft Word and then I email it to myself because I'm a mess. <laughs> I've lost too many things. Yeah, I, no, I'm the same way. I'm like, I have to have this in seven places. That right. way, if six of them burn down, I have a seven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Hold on. Everyone. She's doing the thing again. Oh. This is a double blessed stream. Yes. Double blessed. <laughs> you, you, I, I wish you could see her close up because she's got a little tongue sticking out. Can you see the tongue? You she just tongue looked so me? shy when you got it close and she went like, Can you see the tongue? Yeah little blep oh my little baby we love you okay sorry i'm obsessed with my dog you have asked this question like 20 times <laughs> any tips on how to simply imply sexual affairs in a way that it will fly over children's head um uh by implying it that, that's why i have an answer because it's just like you answered your own question you just imply it mm-hmm. i can't tell you the exact phrase to write because you're the writer and that is your creative duty but um usually you just imply it and it does the thing and like i said i can't tell you the exact phrase um but you would just do an implication and then see if kids notice uh what about you two what do you say um i think it depends on if it's written for children or if it's written it sounds like it's written for adults but yeah you just have the implication of it like some people will spell some people things out like if the kids can't like uh spell or read yet um some people will say like innuendos but yeah they'll just imply it so that's like secret for, so the kids don't know yeah i think i misunderstood this when i uh first saw it uh i thought uh you meant like your audience was children in which case i'm like don't do don't. that yeah <laughs> right yeah but i think it's more like what you guys are saying is that like it's no no i actually thought that at first as well, yeah like right? it, on the off chance you do mean like your audience is children then uh, why would you do this? Just, you, don't, you don't want things going over your audience's head right mm-hmm. and and if you're like running one of those where you're like oh i'm writing this for adults but i'm afraid kids are going to read it mm-hmm. that's, that's not your jo- that's not your yeah. job to yeah. try to prevent that but if this is a book for you know young people then i don't see why you would need to do this i would just yeah. not do do it um <laughs> okay um blah, 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 blah. i'm trying to get through the comments i know words i uh, love the light in the sun looks like a spiral it is a spiral i did that on purpose that's so cool uh i scrolled way too far up uh how do you write while you have ptsd or anxiety due to a traumatic event um i would focus on getting help and save the writing for when you're feeling 
better. Okay. As someone who has CPTSD and had to has had to take time off of writing for my own health, mm -hmm. um, the book will be there waiting for you when you're done. And I thought that taking time off would put a big dent in my career. And instead, when I came back to my platform, there were a million opportunities like just popping up all mm -hmm. over the place for me. So um, and you're I, able to actually do them because you're healthy. Yes, I have written a 100 pages, roughly since coming back to work. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just uh, maybe prioritize, prioritize you over the book for now. What say you two? Um, I agree. Obviously, like as a mental health professional, I'm like, definitely have that figured out first. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I just thought something else. This no, is no, not really... <laughs> Okay, that's funny. Um, but I think that you should definitely get some sort of like grounding intervention connection. I know it's hard, like because not everyone has access to therapy. But of course, I'm going to suggest therapy and someone who understands trauma. Um, and uh, it sounds like it's something that you is popping up now. And just so you know, like, lots of times when there's a traumatic event or events it's often not processed until you're in a safe space or a safer space so if you're beating yourself up about like well it's not happening anymore there's nothing to be anxious about it's just because your brain is processing it a little bit later and that's very very normal so figuring out you know if you go on to um if you're in america if you go on to psychologytoday.com is a good place to start and you look at people who understand trauma specifically and take your insurance or have a sliding scale model if you don't have insurance then maybe you might have some options there but that's all just to find um, someone maybe that can help you out because it's really ill-advised to force yourself to have a writing regimen while your body and brain are telling you that they need to work through something you're more important than anything you're writing. Mm -hmm. So you need mm -hmm. to prioritize yourself over anything you're creating. That's right. Okay, I'm pulling up this question because it confused me so much. I have a male MC whose big flaw is that he has a small temper. Okay, a small temper means that you don't get angry a lot. I think right. a small, short fuse. I, yeah, I think, I think they confuse short fuse and big temper. But, but then, yeah. then I say he never gets dangerous and abusive. And I think it's a common flaw to have. Hmm. Okay, so not being dangerous or abusive is a good thing. It's not a flaw. But I think what they're trying to, I think yeah. they're saying them as separate things. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. It just wasn't worded. Yeah, just separate clauses, I think. The plot oh, it's like, yeah, it's like I think it's a common flaw to have like a short temper. Right. Like uh, a lot of people have short tempers, but that don't flare up into being dangerous and abusive. Yeah. Um, how do I keep him likable? Um, I think knowing the line between. Um, valid anger and uh whiny bitch baby uh, be uh because some <laughs> mm -hmm. characters like like in um the savior's champion tobias starts to develop a short fuse mm -hmm. because people are dying and it's kind of valid mm -hmm. whereas flynn is a whiny bitch baby and he's whining about the fact that um he doesn't get enough laurel lights and things like that. So mm -hmm. I think knowing the difference between those things and also writing a character who's willing to apologize when they mess up. Yeah. Um, that's yep. a big deal. That's um, a big deal. What say you two? Um, I agree with you. I think um, also keep in mind that anger is something I'm very psychology today. I think I'm just <laughs> revving up for tomorrow. Um, but um, anger is something called a secondary emotion which means that there's always a different emotion underlying that. Um, and if you want to look, there's like this, uh, well, there's this like uh, thing where you can look at the primary emotions. It's like a wheel and you can follow that wheel to see how it might show up. Um, and even anger can be very nuanced. It's not just like anger shows up as anger. It can be like anger can show up as rage or frustration or irritability or um, uh, what's the thing where, um, now could shoot hairs everywhere. What's the thing where you kind of don't have like a lot of like something for people's mis other people's mistakes? Uh, mercy, forgive no, me. Not, not mercy. That's a little too intense. <laughs> 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 no, like where you're like, I'm not. T it's it's a word. It'll come to me later. Just watch. I'll be like falling asleep, and I'll be like, <laughs> that's the word. But Bring it's like, it oh, I've run out of like 
something for other people's mistakes, I'll think of it later. Tolerance. Tolerance, thank you. Intolerance is a really common way um, for that for anger to show up. So there's just like being really familiar with like um, uh, emotional maturity and immaturity too. And the range of each emotion can be really helpful. And also knowing that no matter how anger shows up, it's always going to come from something like else that's going on. So once you fully flesh out your character, figure out what his um, like triggers are and what emotion it triggers in him and then why his coping mechanism is to have a short fuse and why that happens is going to be, is going to help you the most because um, I think, I don't know if that lends to, how likable he'll be just depending on what you're writing. Cause I think just definitely go with what Jenna's saying, but I'm more looking at like how you can write this as a common flaw that people can relate to, if that makes sense. But that's what I've got for you. Yeah. I would just say like, uh, uh, and I feel like that I personally feel like for any, anytime you're writing a flawed character, uh, accountability is always a good thing to have to mm -hmm. sort of counteract that flaw for the audience and keep them likable is that like they acknowledge when they make a mistake, they apologize and they are, you know, accountable for it. That may, that gives a lot of uh, leeway for the audience. Sorry, someone got super inappropriate in the comments. So we're having them escorted out. Um, let me catch up. Sorry, was not trying to ignore you guys. I'm done. Just like, oh, oh wait, it's done. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say I don't have the I don't have it pulled up, so I was like, <laughs> it's all good. I didn't it on my either. Phone, to... <laughs> I didn't either, and it's my stream. Like, <laughs> no, that's um, okay. I did it. I like to write for all ages in general, so there's no such thing as a book that's for all ages, unless you mean that you write some books that are for young adults, some are for middle, go, you know, like something like that. There's no such thing as a, as one book that's for all ages, so just take that into consideration. Yeah. Um, this question, <laughs> sorry, uh, I just signed up for your $1 Patreon, so where's the peer review section at? Also, do you have people peer review a full manuscript or 100 pages at a time? Uh, Peer review is something that I think it like happens at university and yes. college. Yes. I um I so I don't genuinely don't know what you're talking about. If Maybe you're looking critique part. I think yeah, if you're looking for critique partners, you can find that on the side of Cyborg Ch uh, Central in the Find Critique Partner uh mm -hmm. channel. It's right there. Discord. It's right under it's, it's, it's yeah. in under the Discord. Yeah. So once you sign up for the dollar Patreon, you open up the Discord server and you can use the find beta readers or find critique partner server. And I am not, I don't have people like locked up to, you know, like, oh, this is my the service that I will provide for you for a dollar. That's not how it works. Um, it's people within the server. Um, you can ask them, hey, like, what does someone like to um, critique my work? And in turn, I will critique yours. Um, and then you can discuss the amount of words and that kind of thing. So, okay. I hope that was clear. Mm -hmm. um, could you categorize a book as mature young adult or upper young adult for the older age range of the group? So yes and no. By that, I mean that there are some young adult books where we know, like Hunger Games, we know that book was more so toward people who are like around 16 and older. Mm -hmm. That's who that book was more so for. And then there are young adult books where we can tell they were more so geared toward the 12 year old range. Percy Jackson. Yeah. Well, Percy Jackson, I think, started off as middle grade. No, it's yeah, all middle grade. Yeah. And oh, uh, right. No, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of 12, of 12. And twelve is in middle school. Mm -hmm. So sorry, but but that young adult example. Young adult is also twelve to eighteen years old. So there's the, that that little bit of overlap. Overlap. Um, okay. Okay. But yeah. so I hate to use Wizard Butthole as an example, but Wizard mm -hmm. Butthole started off as middle grade, and then by mm -hmm. the end of the series, it was considered lower young adult. Um, mm -hmm. so you're, you can write your book that way. Just know that there is no category online that says like, there is no bookstore that says upper young adult and lower young adult, mm -hmm. And there is no mm -hmm. Barnes and Noble that has an upper young adult and lower young adult se section. So you can't technically 
categorize your book that way. Yeah. Um, but when you market it, you can, you know, let people know that this is for, you know, tech, this is more for the 16 year olds as opposed to the 12 year olds. That said, you still need to write it with the knowledge that a 12 year old is going to read it because mm -hmm. that's how it's categorized. Mm -hmm. So you should still be mindful of that. Um, anywho, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what a wild time it's been. Yeah. The, the comments this time are like really unhinged. I've been removing so many people. I'm like, okay, bye. <laughs> really? I, th I thought there was, were there more than two? No, just the two, but I've okay. just been really. That's still a lot. It. Yeah. Yeah. Where I'm just like, and also. Matt, it's, I your, feel it's like, you. It, it's me. <laughs> I bring him out. <laughs> oh my, oh gosh. my gosh. I Sorry, I just passed up the, the, the craziest comment and the one you already removed them. Um, but yeah, <laughs> sounds like I miss all the good stuff. Um, it's just funny because usually I'll be like, oh, well, they probably didn't mean it that way. Or like, oh, they probably misspoke. And today I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> bye. It was what not. a shame that you ruined this for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the is choices that like we make. The choice yes. is, that's weird. So weird that you said that out loud publicly. That's so weird. Right. That <laughs> is that like a difference between young adult and new adult? Okay. So the difference between young adult and new adult is young adult is for teenagers and new adults is for new adults. Um, like so young, adult is, young adults is for people who are like 12 to 18 mm -hmm. and new adults for people who are like 19 to 25. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's called new adult is because usually the characters are embarking into adulthood for the first time. And the story often follows a lot of things that people in that age great group are going for, maybe getting their first apartment, maybe mm -hmm. going to college, uh, maybe experimenting sexually. Um, if it's a fantasy book, it's usually, you know, it can still, it usually involves characters of that age and they're doing a lot of things that new adults do. Mm -hmm. um, so new adult is, it's written for people who are 19 to 25. So it is written for adults. So you can put in all the adult content. You can put in the sex and the dicks and the fuck and the shit and the damn and the hell. Mm -hmm. You can do all of that stuff. You don't have to, but you can because this book is written for adults. Um my opinion of new adult is that the category doesn't necessarily need to exist because adult books, like just adult fiction, is for readers 18 and over. <laughs> so new adult is just basically a subsection of adult. That basically means that it's mostly written for people who are in their early 20s. Mm -hmm. um, but technically, like any adult can read new adult. It's just that the characters are usually like around 22 or something like that. Mm -hmm. What say you two? Anything to add? Nope, you said it. Good for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's almost like I. You read. Are you a professional? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're so good at teaching. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? <gasps> oh, Matt, you you weren't here for. Okay, so last stream we realized that Jenna in July is going to have been doing YouTube for ten years. Wow. How cool I'm is old. that? I'm old. <laughs> I love it. Also, I think it's cool that yours has like your work has like grown and changed like as things grow and change but you've always had like the cool auntie vibe the whole time so yeah but i only became an auntie like five years ago yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> so halfway through i became an actual auntie right Bubbles? yeah but you've always been like the cool auntie with a tiny dog you know yes. and um well i didn't have butters at the beginning but that you know she, we knew she was in my blood yeah uh, but it, it's funny because when I first started, people will call me mother, and I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're going to stop this now. I am yeah. the aunt. The immediate fist. <laughs> yeah, I am the cool aunt. I'm the one that you come to with, you know, I want to be like that cool, rich aunt vibe who just yeah, shows up and is like, aunt. money. With your, with your tiny dog and has yeah, like. It has like, all the cool stories. Opulence. Let me share this. Let me yeah. share the tea about all those authors that you like. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, I know all of their tea. Mm -hmm. the, I'm I'm assuming that this comment is about us. It's because all the authors oh. are attractive and people can't handle it. I I'm think just, that, I think to... they're obviously talking about us. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, <laughs> I'm just gonna assume point. it and give it. Make I, it I think be they my were talking boost. about how like the people were being like weird, and they were like, and they they were like, this is why. Uh... It's clearly because everyone is attractive. <laughs> I'm just I'm just uh, rolling with that because I need the yeah. ego boost. Yeah, I'm gonna tattoo that on 
my desk somewhere. Attractive author. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine going to a tattoo artist and be like, hey, I want attractive author tattooed on me. Someone? They'd be like, no, no, a- go somewhere else. <laughs> Wait, acquaintance of a friend mm-hmm. got Garamond tattooed on their art, Garam- the font. Oh, oh. The what? The okay. Garamond is a font. It's okay. kind of like Times New Roman. Yeah. I thought you said the foot, and I'm like, that makes it less clear for me, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Garamond, the font, tattooed oh, huge on their arm in that font because they love that font. Interesting. Wow. Imagine. Like, t- sometimes I'm just kind of like... Are they a writer? Or are they like... New Roman. Yes. They're a writer, but okay. but they're like I don't I don't know how big they are. So you know how there are some people who like they're like baby writers, and yeah, I've known a lot of baby writers who have gotten writerly tattoos, and I'm like, you're gonna be really not happy about that later. Yeah, I, know, I still like my Comic Sans lower back tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Comic Sans tramp stamp. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was about to ask what it said, and then I'm like, "Does this comic?" Sans. Yeah, it just says oh. "Comic Sans" back there. <laughs> oh my gosh! That's so funny. Please tell me if I'm ever inappropriate. I'm just awkward. I swear. You have always been a delight. No, listen. Studio. The bar that you need to not cross is talking about hell. a mass genocidal man and, and how to make him likable. And how to make him likable. And also, it's really good if you don't... What was the... I don't even remember what the other person did now. Just word uh, salad. Yeah. Oh, just, like, talk about what I think they were writing typing every word they know. Like, spam it. Or, like, when people have a full-blown meltdown in the comments, and it's just like... <gasps> like, that's happened several times, and it's like, I, oh, my God. It's so funny, because I remember thinking, like, whenever I first started becoming a therapist, because I'm apparently bringing that up a lot, where I was like, oh, well, when you write, you think before you write. And it, they found that, like, typically when people are more in a triggered state, because it's muscle related to type, it's, like, easier to communicate that way. So there's, like, less of a filter. Whereas I thought there would be more of a filter. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, you have to sit down, you have to think about it, you have to type it out, you have to hit send. Mm-hmm. But because it's muscle memory and, you know, we're working off vibes when we're in a triggered state, it's like, blah, 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 and that's why there's always so many spelling mistakes and caps lock and all sorts of weird stuff because it's yeah. like just a reaction. So I just found that interesting. And I've always had that in mind, you know, when, you know, things happen. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm like, okay, they're feeling their feelings, but they don't have to feel it publicly here. I'm right. helping you. <laughs> I'm giving you privacy. <laughs> I'm writing middle grade, but I'm unsure of what age would like to read. If you're writing middle grade, you know what age would like to read your book. Middle grade. Middle grade grade means readers are 9 to 12 in that age range. So there you go. That's what what middle grade means. Middle grade. Like so badly. Um, Jenna is a wine aunt or the mom from Big City Greens. What's Big City Greens? I feel like that's a cartoon on Disney of something. But I thought it was a weed reference. I oh. thought it was like an overpriced salad restaurant. I'm almost positive Big City Greens is like um like a hillbilly family that moves to like the city. Almost like um Green Eight Ag- or not Green Acres. Um oh shit. I said shoot shit. Shoot, <laughs> shoot, shoot, shoot it. Shoot, shoot. Um there's there's this oh my gosh, it has LMA and the cement pond. Oh my god, I loved watching that. I so thought you much. said the semen pond. And no, I was like, ew. <laughs> but they had a pool. So basically, these like this like da, 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 farmer named Jed something something barely kept his family fed. Oh, oh my god. Oh, uh, 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 is it <laughs> the, the uh, he, he like shot the earth and they found oil, and so they became like millionaires. Is it the Beverly Hillbillies? Yes, the Beverly Hillbillies. Okay, sorry. I've never seen that so so awesome. in my life, but my dad likes to sing the song. I loved that show. I love that show. So they lived in this like giant mansion. They didn't know what was going on. So they called the pool the cement pond. Anyway, that's I think what Big City Greens is. It's like a bunch yeah. of like, you know. Well, history my nerd kind of people. Never call me a mom ever again. <laughs> <laughs> also, I can't I can't be a wine aunt because I can't drink wine anymore. So wah, wah. I it, think it, it's like 
I always get talks like, with my PTSD. So I get that. Like, I just want to be the rich aunt, rich, cool aunt, rich, cool so. aunt with tiny dog. <laughs> yes. See, there you go. No, what, I'm necessary. What breed is Butters? She is a Chihuahua mutt. So she is half, half Chihuahua. Long haired Chihuahua. Yes, half long haired Chihuahua. And then the other half, and she's a deer head Chihuahua, as you yes. can tell by her long snoot. And she, the other half, we had to get her DNA tested to find out. The other half is um, Toy Poodle, Pomeranian, Wiener Dog, uh, Pekingese, and Cocker Spaniel. That's so interesting to me. Right? The, the most prevalent one is Wiener Dog, but when I say most prevalent, I mean like that one's 11%, and then Poodle is 10%. Oh you my know? god, that's, yeah. So, you know, but she's a little bit long. Are you a little bit wienery? I'm a bit of a hot dog. Um, what are some common phrases you've always misheard and didn't realize mm. it until writing? Okay, nip it in the butt is one that... Nip it in the butt. Yeah, I always thought yeah. that's what it was, but it was nip it in the bud. Yeah. The other one that I didn't learn until my first book is I thought it was old fashioned, not old fashioned. Oh, okay, mm. okay. Um, and I felt stupid. Uh, what about you two? I have so, so many um, because of like sort of English second language, whatever going on. Um, so I thought that it was... Um, I love you with ever, every fiber of my bean. Like, because beans are fibrous. <laughs> um, uh, I recently, like, I had to tell, or sorry, other way around. Jenna had to tell me that pie in the sky meant, I know this isn't with writing, but I absolutely would have had that intention with it. I Jenna had to tell me that pie in the sky writing, or sorry, pie in the sky meant like an unattainable goal mm -hmm. when I thought it was a big goal. Um, I also, I know I've talked about this already, but my husband just like a year ago had to tell me that self-serve did not mean, <laughs> <laughs> self-serve does not mean free. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and I have lived a life of crime my whole life. You have a warrant out for your arrest right now. <laughs> I used to actively and openly steal Froyo. Mm hmm like so much and salads oh my god but i still like i because and i know that's not like technically in my writing but it would have bled it it would have yeah. if i didn't know so i yeah. can't think of any i know there are some i just like can't pull them right. out of the mind palace It'll come right to now you. the mind palace <laughs> Can you speak on the importance of book awards and accolades? Many people are quick to discount them and say they don't matter. But if they don't matter, why do authors mention them? Authors mention them because most readers don't know they don't matter. Um, but what people are talking about when they say they don't matter is because a lot of accolades have less to do with actual reader opinion and more to do with um, reputation. Yeah. So for example probably the the award that matters the least in the whole literary community well first of all there are awards that you pay to enter and yeah. um and it's just all a big scam to make money and then, yeah you get a stamp on your book but it's some unheard of award and you just essentially bought it the kathy Those classic the kathy classic <laughs> there was this lady who just on each of her books like would put like a sticker that said a Kathy classic, like in a, in a blue ribbon. And her name was Kathy. So it was, name, like, it, it was her name. <laughs> so, so like those are the least meaningful awards, but in terms of actual prestigious awards and accolades, I'm going to guess, the least, is it New York times? Yes. The yeah. New York times bestseller list is the yeah. least meaningful because it is the only bestseller list all the other bestseller lists are based on sales Numbers, within a, yeah. with, you know, like, so USA Today is based on sales within X number of platforms. Mm -hmm. Wall Street Journal, I believe you have to, author has to be a member of Wall Street Journal, and then it's based on sales. So it's based on membership mm -hmm. and sales. Um, Amazon is based on sales in a day versus a week. Mm -hmm. Um New York Times bestseller list is the only bestseller list that's based on a combination of sales and reputation. So there have been lots of off and for and they have the most strict rules about where those sales happen. So for example, if all of if you sold 100,000 books, but you sold it all on Amazon, I mean, 
a hundred thousand books in one week is virtually unheard of. Mm -hmm. And you would not even be qualified or considered for a New York times bestseller award mm -hmm. because they were all on Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to be tracked from certain um, like registered bookstores that are registered with the New York times. Um, and, um, and uh, um, even if you follow all those rules and you sell the proper amount to make the list. Mm -hmm. If a more prestigious author or an author, who, you know, an author with a bigger name, um, you know, a fancier author, if they sell not even more than you, but if they sell a lot, mm -hmm. even if it's less than you, you can get bumped off the list for them. So, but a lot of people still a lot of the reason that authors mention this is because a lot of readers don't know this i mean mm -hmm. did, i'm gonna guess that most of the people here did not know this about the new york times bestseller list mm -hmm. so we still mention it i mentioned that i'm a number one amazon bestseller i do think that is meaningful because that means I that so. i sold thousands of books in one day yeah, um i like to mention that um, my book was uh, voted one of the best books of all time by book that's, repository because that's that was, the one that i'm like Ooh, that to me can't. is meaningful because it was voted like it was right. a it was opinions of readers you know yes. so that to me is more meaningful i didn't pay to enter that i didn't even know that was happening yeah so, did someone have to tell you that it happened yeah i didn't know that i was in the running until someone congratulated me that i had won and i was like what one mm -hmm. what so yeah, all that to say is the reason authors mention them is because no one knows this shit. So yeah. I'm sorry, um, Pichu and Vinny are really cute and I'm taking a picture of them. Oh. Together. Hold on, let's see if I can. And it's like really horrible. Everything's covered in hair, but like look how look how cute. Oh, oh. they're friends. That's they're friends. Easy. <laughs> the fact that inappropriate comments stem from my question made me sick. It is not your fault. Oh, definitely Elizabeth. not your fault. Nope. I've, you I've are, been there. <laughs> you are a ray of sunshine. You are a lovely little duckling. Okay. Um, I sh Why am I still looking at questions? I should be doing another sprint. But I'm like, uh, after all the unhingedness, I'm like obsessed. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were like cleansing the palate, cleansing the palate. Oh, no. You're like, no, I'm in it. <laughs> the only child Jenna has is Butters, my little baby. We keep flip-flopping about um, adding to the animal family, but it's a whole big thing. I so. still want you to be in the chicken cult with us. My husband Yeah, is we just want, want Cliff to get, because I want that oh, to be yeah. the first Wait. thing. Yeah. So I want him to get well enough. And then we'll never have to buy eggs again. There's How old is egg. Butters and when is her birthday? She's a Virgo, mm -hmm. just like Matt. Yeah. <laughs> her birthday is in one of um, us. <laughs> yes, one of us. Her birthday is in uh, September, and she's five. Uh, we they don't know the exact date of her birth because she was a rescue, mm -hmm. um, but they thought it was like early September. So we just chose uh, September 9th because it's like nine nine, you know, and mm -hmm. nine is my lucky number. So she's September 9th. My little baby, she's sleeping on my feet right now. Uh, let's see. Do you need a word count to be posted on every page at the top right hand corner before submitting to an agent? I don't know if you mean like the page number. No, I think, okay, on your something that you submit, you should say how many words are in your manuscript. Yeah, like, then it, it would be depending on every agent has okay. rules. Yeah. So it depends on their rules. And like, for example, most agents, you submit it digitally and not through email. So you're not going to have pages anyway. Mm. Um, so yeah, uh, it, look at their rules and see what they say. I'm nodding like I knew that. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I only knew about the digital thing because I queried and I had like put together this Word document that's so beautiful. And I was like, oh, that was useless. because <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, definitely. And I had no idea that it would be all digital. So yeah. I mean. I knew it would be all digital. I didn't realize you couldn't. Yeah, I like, thought it was email. Email. Yeah, I thought it was email. And they do have that option as like a backup, but most people submit it. This, the digital way is through like query tracker. Yeah. And it's nice because then they will, like the query tracker will alert you immediately. Like you, they've read it or, you know, like, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, <laughs> Kaylee, you have to answer this. I can't I, give you like a number because it happened so much to the point that I used to go with like, this girl that we were, we had like a class together 
and she i would take her to this i was like oh it's a local it was a local one too i was like it's a local place and we can go to it and she was like oh okay and i was like here you just like get your froyo and you eat it and she was like she was like oh i'm like too nervous to do that i'm like it's fine i'll get it for you <laughs> and and like i was like okay so every time we went there she like had me get it for her and i was like it's fine girl like social anxiety like i get it and like I, I was just like stealing shit and i was like why did they let me do that and then she went alone once and she tried it once and she got kicked out so i was like why did they let me do it is it my face I can do crimes. <laughs> like, like, like I did I was doing crimes. <laughs> no one stopped me. So I Kaylee, I don't know. Um, a lot. The answer is a lot. just like last year I learned that that wasn't true. It's just uh, what okay, in my mind, I thought it was like kind of like the, those things like oh, we're on hard times and the economy is horrible like cuz it's always been horrible. And it's like so if you're able to pay then pay, but like if you're not then it's self-serve when you just serve yourself whatever you need. And I was like, what a lovely place. Like how thoughtful. And then then as I like you know, graduated college and stuff like all of my college was stealing. And then and then as whenever I graduated I was like I can pay for this now. I shouldn't have been having any of it. <laughs> I shouldn't have been having any of it. So I, I, I can't. I don't know. You, you go lot. there and they're like nailing like boards to the windows. <laughs> <laughs> they're just Notorious like, we don't understand it, but we just lost so much money. <laughs> <laughs> so much salad and chickpeas are gone. Like, <laughs> I can't. I don't know. So I don't funny. know. Froyo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to every Froyo place. Have you been I back? Know. Like since you learned? Yeah. So, uh, what did you say? Have you been back since you learned? No. I was gonna say. Like... And how I learned was there was this little self serve place with wildflowers in it um, mm -hmm. on the side, and my husband was like. I was getting out. I was like, oh, I would really love those flowers, like in a vase. And he was, and I didn't have any cash on me. So I was like, well, this is the time where you take it then, where you serve yourself. And so we stopped on the side of the road and he handed it to me. He handed me like 10 bucks. And I was like, what is that for? And he's like, to pay for it. I'm like, it says self serve. And he was like, Iona, are you joking and i was like about what like i just want really pretty flowers and he was like go look and see how much it is and and then you tell me and then i like my life flashed before my eyes like, oh, all of the crimes i committed by accident oh i feel so bad oh i'm so sorry yeah oh my goodness now <laughs> someone's talking shit about dogs in the comments you can what? Shit about but, dogs, dude. Okay, this is okay. Let me just give everyone a little bit. Oh, Christopher, no. The Christopher, thing is, you've been doing some stuff in the comments, but I'm, I'm about to answer one of his questions. Well, I'm sorry, Christopher, but you need to take a break from talking just for like 30 <laughs> minutes. I'm sorry. I'm you can listen to what we're saying, but you have to stop. Okay, this is something that has bothered me. Now I'm gonna go on this little side tangent, Jenna and her husband have like you know disabilities and like you know things going on and they have a service dog and i don't think it's very polite to say you don't like dogs with someone that needs a service dog to like exist and stuff yes <laughs> and i've seen a couple people do that and i'm sorry i'm using christopher as an example but they're just the most recent one so <laughs> you know we just got to take a little break from talking and then you'll come back and it'll be okay. We all yeah. have these learning moments. For those who don't know, uh, Butters is a trained PTSD dog. Yeah. And she does... Stop saying you don't like dogs. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's cool if you don't like them. But, like, I would, like, I'm, like, I would never be, like, like, Iona's talking about her kid. And I'm, like, I don't like kids. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. Like, I, I can't stand people like that. But anywho, Christopher, I'm going to answer your question because yes. it scared me so much. Okay. Self-publishing. Oh, Butters heard that they're slander. <laughs> she She's is, like, I am. She has blessed us not once, not twice, but thrice, thrice now. And we are saying such horrific things in the comments. 
she is like she is like i am an employed doggo i have a vest i can bring out her vest it is so small it's so small and it's too big for her which is why she oh. but anywho <laughs> butters is square enough yeah she, she got a little tiny box like, like, <laughs> get two marshmallows from her <laughs> <laughs> the marshmallows oh my the goodness. but, oh but any my anywho uh, okay so so if okay traditional publishing is free if any if, if um the the entire the only negative about self-publishing is that it's not free it's mm-hmm. expensive to do um it, it can take like about like i've i've definitely spent five, six grand um, self-publishing a book. Mm -hmm. Traditional publishers are free. That's the whole point is that they will publish their, the book for you for free. And in turn, they get a sizable cut of, of your royalties. They get a big chunk of your royalties. And that's why traditional publishers get paid significantly less than self-published authors. Mm -hmm. Um, so, for example, a self-published book gets 70%, 70 cents for every dollar it makes mm-hmm. um, in, in the ebook form. Mm-hmm. A traditionally published book, the author will get 25 cents for every dollar it earns. And that's the, the, the bigger norm. range. For, right. for, a, for a physical book, the um, author, a traditionally published author, will get 15 cents for every mm-hmm. dollar the book earns. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that's how the math works out. Whatever. Okay. If a traditional publisher is offering to publish you and they're saying it costs money to publish with them, if they're giving you a a charge, that's called a vanity press. It is a scam. Um, So yes, it's a scam. If they are making you pay for it, it's a scam. Trad is free, but don't you still pay for editing and advertising either way? No! Oh my gosh, you people! Have you watched none of my videos? Free range, (laughs) I adore you. I just am worried for everyone. Um, I think this just shows that everyone's in the indie club. Yeah. um, (laughs) If if you go traditional, you do not pay for an editor. The publishing house has an editor. They they give you that editor. The editor is usually the one that does the acquisition of... Right. I the can't manuscript. speak for that. Yeah. As far as advertising and marketing goes, no matter which way you go, if you go traditional or indie, you are going to have to market yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, that said, not all marketing costs money. I am saying something where I, I'm speaking, you know, as someone who spends less than a thousand dollars on marketing a year as a self-published author. Um, so uh, no matter if you go traditional or indie, you are going to have to market yourself and your writing. A traditional publishing, uh, a publisher is going to expect you to do that. And mm-hmm. you know, if you're self-publishing, you should do that for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're going the traditional publishing route, they are going to pay for the cover artist. They are going to pay, pay for the editor. They are going to pay for the copyright. They are going to pay for the printing. They are going to pay for every thing involved in making and distributing the book. Um, but they expect you to market it. Um, so yes, I hope this clears things up. Man, oh man. I think uh, what is confusing, not to be, I swear I'm not doing devil's advocate because the devil does not need an advocate. But I do think it's confusing when Chad will say, like, and I like traditional publishing, it's fine. But it's like mm-hmm. Chad will say one thing that they're going to do or they've, they've done it in the past. And then it's kind of like in everyone's collective memory that they do these things. Like, I still remember thinking that um, traditional publishers, like, advertise for you because they used to. Yeah, like, it, it was just one of those things that was really, like, and they'll change. And each tra- um, publishing house is different. And that's not even including independent publishing houses, which are really cool. So mm-hmm. there, there's just a lot going on. So right. I get the confusion, but yeah, that's the free one. That's the free one. But you have a lot less control. Yes. Um, I uh, also a lot of people get confused because if you're a big author, if you're their Stephen King, you're their Lee, Lee, Lee Bardugo, whatever. Yeah. Um, then they will advertise you. They mm-hmm. will market you because you are guaranteed to make them a shitload of money. Yep. So sometimes people will see Stephen King getting all this 
uh, advertising yes. yeah. and they'll think, oh, that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. But they forget that there are quite literally millions of authors out there that you've never heard of. And that's because that publishing house, they're not wasting their time publishing like, or, or advertising Joe Schmo. They're putting their money into Stephen King because they know that he's a guaranteed shot. And that sounds really fucked up. And I'm not trying, you know, I'm not, I'm not shading traditional because we all know I am very pro hybrid. Um, mm -hmm. It's just good business. It's right. kind of like an investment. I used to work in finance. I used to be a stockbroker. Mm -hmm. If one of your, if you've got a, a stock portfolio and you have 10 stocks and nine of them are questionable and you don't really know how, how they're going to go, mm -hmm. but one is always makes you money, you're going to put most of your money in that one. Mm -hmm. And you're going to put less money in the others and see how it goes, you know? Mm -hmm. And if one of those little stragglers ends up surprising you and doing really, really well, then you might put more money into it. You might go, okay, this is a good, this is a good one. I'm going to, I'm going to invest more in you. But that, you know, it's just good business sense, of, essentially. Um, so it that's a weird experience though, being like in a re like as a reader, and having something seem like the norm with the Stephen Kings and the Lee Bardugos, you're like, oh, that's what happens to authors. They're like auto famous mm -hmm. when when like it's actually not like because of the advertising. It's right. very weird. It's very mm -hmm. paradoxical, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. So it, you can't look at the, the outliers. You got to understand that they are outliers because there are millions of authors out there. And there's probably only 10 that you can recite by, you know, off the top of your head, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so they're the outliers. They are the ones who have essentially proven their worth to the publishing house. And so their publishing houses are dumping their money into them. So that's mm -hmm. why I usually tell people, no, the publisher, traditional publisher is not going to market you. It's not because it's that way with everyone. It's because it's that way with 75 to 90% of the authors that, that mm -hmm. go traditional publishing. And, and you should just never assume you're going to be the exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Let's do, let's do another sprint. sprint. Uh, yes, I agree though. Okay. Let's do another sprint. Um, I'm going to get Butter's little vest and I'll show it in the, the sprint. I'll just hold it up. She hates it. It's too big for her. It always falls off. Oh, so tiny, but she, she's got a little vest. Okay, guys, so we're going to set the timer for 20 minutes, and then I'm going to come up with two truths and one lie. Okay, I have mine one. ready. Okay, I'll come up All right. with them. All right, three, two, one, go.
All right, folks. How did everyone do? I finished my newsletter. Huzzah. And I brought out Butter's little vest for everyone to see. So cute. That is so cute. Yes, it is cute and too big, but she... <laughs> I love you know, that that's too big for her. Right? It just always ends up, like, slowly, you know, twisting around. Sliding off. <laughs> uh, how'd you do? I'm good. I was able to do, like, scheduling stuff. I, uh, I'm heard my chair like have a loud crack uh, while it was mm -hmm. leaning in it. So I thought I was about to die. <laughs> uh, and I came up with uh, two truths and a lie. Yay. Nice. Uh, I like sorry, how I... we can mark jump scare off of the bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I got caught up because people are recommending other harnesses for butters. It doesn't really matter because PTSD dog work is usually, at least for Cliff's situation, it's usually done at home. Um, mm -hmm. It's not often that we have like panic attacks in public. So we don't usually need her to do service work in public. I like that they know about the other harnesses. Yeah. But, but, uh, yeah, she doesn't but yeah, uh, we uh, typically... Um, I've only ever needed to put the vest on her like twice and that was because she was coming with us to a doctor appointment, you know? So, um, but anywho, um, it's time to play a game. Uh, okay. If you guys aren't familiar with two truths and one lie, each of us is going to say two truths and a lie about ourselves. And we are going to grill um, everyone for a minute to get the details. And you guys are going to ask questions. Oh, Butters wants to play. Uh... I'm ready. She's like, I want to play. I'll, I'll say two truths and one lie. She's like, here's, here's the lie. I'm a bad girl. <laughs> no, you're I've a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> I've done some bad things. <laughs> Don't you dare desecrate <sighs> Butters and memory yeah, I need to JoJo Siwa. Like cursed <laughs> cursed um TikToks. <laughs> yeah. Please. I, I'll send I'll send you cursed TikToks later. It's so upsetting. But that's what that's in reference to. Um, wow. yes, <laughs> but, but anywho, um, oh, now she's got her ball. Okay, guys. Um, so basically, uh, you guys will ask questions in the comments, ask them fast, please, because we hate having to sit around and we will grill each other and everyone has to guess what is the lie. Who wants to go first or someone just nominate someone? Cause I have decision anxiety. Well, I, I don't know. You're talking a big game. Now I'm curious. Okay. I'll go first. I heard right. people I'm telling you to go first. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I always do mine in themes. Yes. Um, Cause it makes it easy to come up with the stuff. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, oh, Jay true. says we Matt could, should start. We, I'll, we I'll go could. first. We already made the decision. So <laughs> oh, Matt off the plank, but <laughs> well, we um, <laughs> you can talk more about snails. He's never living. No. <laughs> okay. Never forgive you. So the theme, my theme is, one time in college, okay? Oh boy, this could go any direction. Yes, <laughs> I have, um, I have romance, classroom stuff, and friendship. All so right, we cover the whole gamut of like what happens in college. I like it. <laughs> all right, number one. One time in college, my friend tried to set me up with a guy who spent the whole party talking about his ball reduction surgery. He even showed me pictures. I didn't know you could do that, but keep going. <laughs> number two. One time in college, I had to leave class early because I was having the worst cramps of my life uh -huh. and almost threw up. My male professor was offended that I left, so I wrote him a very graphic apology letter explaining menstruation. That has totally happened to me, so I hope <laughs> that that one, I resonate with it if, if that one's true. And number three, one time in college, I won a MySpace contest to see one of my favorite bands for free. Oh. And we missed the show because my friend accidentally dyed her hair neon yellow and had a full-blown meltdown. I really hope that one's not true. I'd be so mad. <laughs> I'd be so mad. Okay. Okay. Do we need me to read them again? It's, it's ball reduction, 
menstruation and <laughs> neon yellow. I just saw one of the comments. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> this one? <laughs> yeah. You are on a roll, Chris. First it was Angus Anus. <laughs> Oh my god, that's how big were his balls. Okay, that was, I'll save that for the QA part. No, but so everyone was, send your questions. Like, what? Uh, yeah, okay, I already have my yeah, question. I, I okay, are, are I we ready? We're just gonna grill the ball. I'm okay. gonna grill the balls too, because that's what I'm doing. That just gives me such a like image. Okay. Yeah. Okay, all right, three, two, one, go. What is a ball reduction thing? Like, yeah, is it balls? quality or size? It was, it was, oh, did you they were so big that he said they touched the toilet water when he pooped. That's like too big. That's too There's big. no way. Um, I'm sitting here. I'm like, no, have, like, a, like, was there like a tumor? Like, why did this happen? They, yeah. It was just like extra scrotum. I think oh, so they just like kind of, oh, not, not like, the no, ball. like pulled the skin up. Like I, 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 well, you saw the pictures. Tell us what they did. The pictures were of the, the removed stuff, and oh. it just looked like it just looked like scraps of chicken. Like it just, oh. like, <laughs> it just looked like, like piles of, of meat. So, okay, Wait. yeah. So, so the the uh, so I think the, it was the packaging it was is what. Yeah, I got yeah, reduced, the not the product. Not the yeah. testicle, the package. Okay, okay. Yeah. I thought it was his testicle was that big, and I was like, that's upsetting. Damn it. <laughs> he got a ball lift. <laughs> Man, okay, do you want another minute? Because you guys are so <laughs> ball-focused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll, do, we'll make it two minutes this okay, time. Okay, okay. Or all together, I mean. Okay, go. What band was it? Okay, it was. they were called The Fold. It was an indie oh. band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, you know the fold? Yes, I do, and I don't know why. It makes me think I'm so confident about it. I think you've told me what they were, and now Probably. I'm regurgitating that I knew them all along. That's okay. pretty, I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. Okay. Uh, did they were they trying to dye their hair a less neon yellow? They were trying just... to go Marilyn Monroe. That oh, was the info, I, yeah. and they went full, like I mean a highlighter yellow. Like I saw it, and there's no there's no reaction you can give to like, save it. Big Bird, just. <laughs> Like, like I, but I mean, like, like you could why didn't like, we, like neon, scarf it? like oh, scarf, God. like why didn't she scarf it and then like go like a normal person so you because could see your band for free? Stupid. Uh, <laughs> and this was my, I like the band. She did it, so she uh, didn't. She, uh, we're not friends. Well, she ruined she it for you. Like you're the wow. one. Who doing. I just was like, put on a fucking hat, and but yeah. she was. Yeah. Like, sobbing like oh my makeup down the cheeks and just having a full-blown panic attack i get it. having a meltdown over hair it's just like there i mean you didn't have to miss the band yeah I don't she know. was she was special i actually um i actually missed a lot of things she was we called her her name was lacy we called her flaky lacy because she regularly oh. flaked out on things and i missed a lot of stuff because of her double dates um a lot of music a lot of bands um and um there were times where she was supposed to be like like we were at a party together and she was supposed to be the designated driver and then she would disappear Huh? Or just disappear, just disappear. No, she, and she, drink? she would disappear like with a guy or something. She oh. was you know, like that, and so we're just abandoned at a party, like, like hello. you know, yeah. You know? So we're not friends anymore. Anywho, okay, let's see. Let's go through the questions here. Were the photos pre or post ball reduction? It was of the meat. It was of what was removed. So I didn't see his actual balls That's ever. Man. But also, why bring that up? It's in like a Ziploc. In his defense, his Ugh. friends kept bringing it up. And he just kind of went along with it. That's so awful. His why friend, would they do that? It was one of those situations where I was like so turned off. Not because he By had the to friends. his balls Like, reduced. why are you friends with them? Like That and also like, how are you not telling them to fuck off? Like, have yeah. some, like, grow a spine. I was going to say, have some balls. You <laughs> know, grow a spine. <laughs> like, I them, want you know them you them have extra. Up. Yeah, <laughs> so, because it was just it was just like like have some self respect. Like they are they were trying to do it. Like he's got big balls. Yeah, you know he's the guy for you. And I'm just like these guys are not your friends. They're, they're not real friends. Suck. Yeah, they're not your friends. I don't know why they're here. And also, yeah, fuck off. Yeah, that's awful. 
Um, <laughs> okay, so someone says, I think the letter is a lie. Someone says, I think the menstruation is true. What was the... You want to know after that, I could yeah. do whatever the fuck I wanted. Okay. <laughs> I could do whatever the fuck I wanted. Also, I'm sorry. This It's not like it's high school where they need to account for children. It's college. You're paying him. He was very... Exactly. It, I, I, I will say that I really liked this professor because he really... He is a history professor, of course, of course. And he really cared about his job. And he was very passionate. And everyone made fun of him because he was, like, so into it. But mm. it was, like, sweet, you know? And so when people left early, like, he was like, you know, you should be into it. Like, I'm into it, you know? Yeah. But I just thought that was so, like, ignorant because it's, it like... It is ignorant. You know, yeah. as a woman. And the thing is, is I when I say... I was having the worst cramps of my life like I'm not I believe you well well the thing is is that at the time I had a blood clot in my arm so I was on blood thinners it's a blood clot thing yeah I was oh, on blood no. thinners um no it was just you may not you may not you guys may not know this uh but if you are on blood thinners and you are a woman it is known they they tell you that you are going to have the most painful periods of your life uh mm. because um the cramps get horrible because you're on blood thinners so your body is just like yeah you know i mean it's blood coming out you know so um it, when i say it was the worst cramps of my life i mean it i'm not I normally totally poor matt i'm not normally yeah. like a like my my periods no, are normally mine pretty, are, mine pretty chill are, mine are concerning unless i have like medicine which i have now yeah. and figured it out but like mine it, are like, it's made me pass out before so i yeah. totally believe you that's totally well, I've for me, mine are usually pretty chill, but you're like, what the when hell I was is on blood this? Dinners, I, yeah, I, I was dry heaving the way home. I almost feel home. like that's worse because you like weren't ready for it, and you're just like, okay, it's happening, like a usual thing, and then it was just like hell. Yeah, yeah. But but they they warned me. They told me that my periods were going to be awful. I, they, I like, get, like they I tell you they all that due stuff. diligence. Like yeah. they did their due diligence, but like. It's still like you you will never be ready for it until you go through it. Uh yeah, exactly. It was it was horrendous. It felt mm. like childbirth. Um how did you turn out it turn out so bright yellow. I, I think, you know, when you, she was bleaching her hair so that she yeah. could get it that color. And when you bleach hair, um, it usually bleaches, um, like, like brassy and mm -hmm. she had color underneath it. Oh. So that can change the brassiness. And I think that's why it turned, it literally turned, uh, neon yellow. Uh, did the professor in number two react to your note? It was an email, so I didn't see his reaction. But the next day, he was like, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. And that after that, I could leave class whenever the fuck I wanted. That's and good. He, I'm glad he was like that. He, yeah, yeah, that was very cool. Sounds like he learned. Anywho, <laughs> I, <laughs> I gave you guys the full stories. Um, mm. uh, it's time to guess. <laughs> I, there's no way he had a ball reduction surgery. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be real. I uh, I don't know. All of these are so plausible. <laughs> um, I will say that this is once again a situation where all of it is time. mostly true. Yeah. Hmm. Which is why I was able to tell such thorough stories. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I gotta I gotta hitch the trailer to the ball the reduction. Balls. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go with the like the third, the hair one, where it was like not a band that you were get, or it was gonna be a different band. Well, you didn't say the band in the original, but like it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't a band, but maybe it was like a festival or like a something slightly different kind of thing. That's what I'm going with. That it seems a lot of people are thinking the same thing that not th that three is not true on a technicality. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. And. The other people, and then some people are split on. Uh, I think the procedure is real, but I still think that's the lie. I think the letter is the lie. Did he get actually get a ball enlargement? Okay, <laughs> like it was like flipped. Yeah. So, so one of you is right, and one of you is wrong. Mm. The ball reduction is true. <laughs> that's so horrifying that poor man i feel so bad for him that he had such shit yeah. friends yeah. that he had to like humiliate himself the note that care. i had left myself for fact or fiction was harrison's balls <laughs> <laughs> and it's ingrained in my brain and, and, and you know and they're just showing me pictures uh. of his 
shoot up foreskin or not foreskin scrotum that'd be worse yeah. not an adult circumcision <laughs> That so, happens, wow. so ball reduction is true. Um, worst cramps of my life, absolutely true. I was so petty. I was like, I feel, I almost died driving home. I'm, in, I love the teacher, but it's like, man, no, come on. You know. Like, I'm not so one I, of the people. I wrote him was- this letter, basically saying, "Hi, I have like saying sorry, I left your class because the same friend from number three. That's the lie, by the way. Okay. Uh, the same friend from number three I took that class with me, and she told me that he made a stink after I left. He was like, <gasps> oh, we're gonna." so I wrote him an email saying so sorry and I don't remember it word for word but what I basically said was I don't um like I, I'm sorry that I had to leave your class early I have a blood clot in my arm and because of that I am on um two types of blood thinners and um blood thinners make your menstruation really really bad I am currently menstruating and uh mm-hmm. the cramps are extremely and I just went into graphic detail because yeah. I was like I like that you did that because it's almost like malicious compliance yeah um not not calling you malicious but just that terminology of where you're just like if you really need to know the excuse i'm gonna tell you what's happening like hello that's what you get you know and then after that i literally i ended up taking another class of his like a year later and like i'm well off blood thinners i no longer have a blood clot and i was late to class because my car uh, mm-hmm. was egged which is a whole other thing and oh. I said sorry I was late and he goes it's totally fine I know I know yeah. I remember you, the blood clot I'm like yeah I just have a, I just have a fucking two a year blood long blood clot two years? yeah that's a normal thing <laughs> I'd be happen. dead but anywho okay so the Not my the egged thing- car though like the left <laughs> twists and turns you want to like- know who egged the car who egged the car is it the hair yes her boyfriend <gasps> wait did you talk about this already before I think maybe uh, maybe she, but because he thought because he thought no because we told her that he is cheating on her yes she decided she, did. Ditched us, did. she ditched us and decided to stay with him and so he ached my car because we told her that he was cheating. but like oh. we had it okay. for what it's worth we didn't like just we had evidence like uh yeah we but had... also even if that's i think that's a good friend thing to do i don't mm-hmm. know why it's so commonplace for people to be like how dare you tell me Mm-hmm. like something I should know I, I just, would want to know I would want to know and you want to know why she forgave him is because she told him and he goes and, and she showed him that we gave her the evidence and he yeah. goes I'm not cheating on you don't you trust me and that was it she's like yeah he said he's not oh. <laughs> Matt. wait was it wasn't it like where you were able to see him like messaging somebody yeah, we, that we you t- definitely have talked about because i don't know how i could yeah. possibly know such a thing but yeah but okay sorry this is like i have so much college tea but basically, <laughs> i did win a contest on myspace okay. you had to create fan art for the band and i was like experimenting with photography mm-hmm. and so i took their album poster and yeah. i photoshopped myself into it posing really cool and i won That's i so did cute. i did win that i was able to go see them at their next show yeah. we she did dye her hair neon yellow and mm-hmm. she did have a full blown meltdown and she almost made me miss the show. Good on you. But for still I going. was finally like, girl, we are fucking going. And we <laughs> went and she just she just hung out there with her neon yellow hair and Honestly, she just rock a it at that point. point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just embrace it. She yeah. couldn't get it fixed at a salon for like weeks. So she was just showing up to school wearing beanies for weeks. Oh, with yeah, these, I like, would do that. And and everyone's like questioning. I swear to God it was highlighter yellow yeah i don't I'm, I'm not a hairstylist i don't know how that happened but she was going for marilyn monroe blonde and she got highlighter yellow and this was like one of the only times where she didn't make me miss a show and i was like i, mm-hmm. I like that you put your foot down with that one where you're like we're not missing it yeah so i photoshopped real hard for this like yeah. we are going we are, we are fucking going got to meet them and everything and it was cool um but yeah okay and that was this that was the show was at the same location when i first saw cliff oh my gosh oh, it was a different church? show yeah the church? yeah That's the fun. church but anyway okay guys sorry that took forever we still have two more rounds and it's <laughs> already seven so matt you go next okay uh I don't remember if I've shared these before, so if so, pretend we'll I have. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Or we'll just be really uh, good at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I once had a masseuse hit on me during the massage. No, stop. Not the sexual uh, harassment. <laughs> so I heard it right when you said so masseuse, sad. I knew where this was going. Uh, 
I've brought a sword to several parties. Oh, okay. And I uh, once dislocated my shoulder on a bar punching bag. A bar? Wait, what's a... What, oh, like, like a punching bag at a bar. Oh, 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 I see, I see. Okay. Why, Why the do they fuck have is there a punching, punching bag, bag at a bar? bar? Why would they Ohio's have... cool, you know? Yeah. Oh god. Oh my okay. goodness. I just need you guys to see her right now. She is oh, just sitting she's there doing crying. So many oh. Blessings. I love Hi, that. Guys. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't even know where to begin. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. hold on. Bar punching bag. Masseuse. Uh, masseuse. Yes. Creepy masseuse. Um, mm. and then what was the other one? Party swords. Party, Party swords. swords. Man, you okay. just don't give me the vibe of the sword bringing guy, but Maybe that's part of your maybe sword that's... bringing guy. Like that's a regular. No, it's a thing. It's a thing. Is it really? And depending on the type of sword, tells a lot about who you are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If we... it was a katana, I'm gonna be mad. Was it a katana? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start the. Okay, it's okay. not. We're gonna okay. We're gonna start the questioning. Go ahead, Three, go two, one, go. Male masseuse. No. Okay. Um. No. What were Just you getting massaged? Oh, uh, it was a full body massage. Of course, oh, that it makes it perfect. Um, what were it they fun. saying? Um, she was telling me uh, about how men often ask for certain things at a massage, and that she doesn't mind uh, <laughs> when Stop they do. It. And Stop. I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Stop talking. Okay, I feel violated now. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus. Sometimes men also doesn't it like suck to be lumped into everybody like that? That's right. so gross. It's like, oh, so you think I'm a predator? Thank yeah. you for that. Um, um, okay. okay. What kind of sword? What kind of sword was it? Uh, so two separate swords. Oh, God. one okay. is what like, was like a uh, replica, like uh, I think it's like French sword. Okay. I know that sounds so sketchy, but yeah, <laughs> like just replica French sword, and the other one, it's. From like a TV show or something. Why? Okay. Neither no. sword is my. So I don't own any of them. But, okay. Why but, do you bring? Them? Why? <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, so, right. Uh, I have a friend group that likes to do themed parties. Oh God. Okay. And Keep one going. of them was like a medieval theme oh, party, God. and we were going for like. You are that rug. kind. <laughs> and, I, and I was just like, well, I know someone that has a sword. I can borrow their sword and uh -huh. bring it. And then the other one, uh, funny enough, it. was um, a, a wedding reception that also had kind of like a <laughs> Oh, medieval... is that the same one where you had the, you got the, the, yes. the mug from? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking and about. And so okay. I once again borrowed a separate sword. Interesting. Okay. Punching bag. What kind of bar has a punching bag in it? Is That's not like, a good is idea. Is fight club? Uh, no, it's this like uh, country bar that's in, that's around uh, where I live. And uh, I unfortunately frequent it a decent amount because it is the only like go out dancing place. Social, that, yeah. Yeah, in my area. So it's kind of the I default. Understand. Uh, and it has like one of those punching bag uh, machines. Oh, was it the kind oh, that goes like oh, yes. this? Yes. Okay, no, I thought you meant a full No, 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 sorry. Yeah, like it like swings down and you. Yes, like, yeah. And it like hugs you. Wow, yeah. that's like an arcade game. That's yes, yes, yes. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do it. That makes exactly. way more sense now. Okay, okay. that, that yeah. I for a second there was like Ohio is a dystopia. Is a dystopia. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong at all about that, but this might not be the reason. Okay, let's go to the comments. I think the punching bag is a lie. Did you accidentally go to the wrong kind of massage? <laughs> it's literally a chiropractor's office. Oh my god. No, no. no like uh, also, you have that's an again unhappy another... ending. No, not the. Oh my god. Well, I'm glad it was an unhappy ending. Was the punching bag hung at a weird angle? Uh, not particularly. Uh, I, yeah. I don't know. I might give this vibe. I don't punch things often. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that's punching. That's a true flag. Green flag. That's how men are Yeah, I'm not a puncher, so it didn't go well. What did the masseuse look like? Uh, she's very. Thin. Uh, okay. Was she at least like your age? No, she was oh. like probably in her forties. No, that is so gross. She also like, gave me her number uh, after the massage. That's a completely different kind of hitting on. So first she hit on you, like 
like you yeah. know a sex worker but unsolicited mm -hmm. and, and then, then she hit on you the... like a girlfriend yeah that's not good that's not right. good on both sides that's not good <laughs> it's just so inappropriate like oh. the age difference and i'm yeah. i'm very much of the mindset that like once you, like i'm not anti-age gap yeah but it's like i mean like i'm assuming you were in your early 20s and she's yeah. in her 40s like you know i don't know yeah if it was a man doing this to a woman we would be concerned you know. and that's why we are concerned exactly yeah. very predatory it's, not good never went back uh, yeah that's, i'm that's surprised nice. i'm surprised yeah. no. uh <sighs> someone asked what your score was with on the punching machine mm. um before because i had done it multiple times uh, oh. uh i want to totally cracking like, away at it yeah you know but uh on the one i dislocated my shoulder uh bad uh-huh because it went the force went yeah, that right. way. The force went this way instead of, <laughs> instead way. of exactly. out. Physics. Yeah. I'm uh, still thinking. I'm like, I'm just like, I don't. Okay. If you want to see something super gross, I can at will dislocate my shoulders, but I won't. Oh. Do that. <sighs> but that's because, oh, I, I used got... to be able to do that with my knee. Oh, I can do that with my knees, but you shouldn't be able to do that with your knees. I have it because <laughs> I have a connective tissue disorder. Right. You should not be able to do that. It I don't know. One Matt, knee. I have one Matt, weird knee. One weird knee. Yeah. My, um, Matt, I don't think was here for the, I got diagnosed with um, EDS, which is exciting that I have that diagnosis, which is uh, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And it has to do with the connective tissue. And so I'm able to like do like weird things with like oh. my arms and stuff. I don't know. So. Anyway, um, what are we guessing? Yeah. Everyone, what are your guessing? I'm gonna guess the punching bag. I'm, I'm I gonna... am I am too because I, I <sighs> there's no specific reason. I'm just thinking like dislocating your shoulder can be like super serious and you have to go mm -hmm. to the hospital and stuff. Yeah. So I'm but but also I still think it, it could is, have happened. It's very realistic though it because is. it's like I mean like I would hope that the masseuse is a lie, but I, you have told us some strange stories of women hitting on you. So yeah. I, it's very it's very like on brand. Yeah. For Matt. <laughs> yeah. And the swords. We we already knew we already knew about. We already the knew wedding. you were a nerd. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going, I'm going with the, the punching bag, like maybe like it happened to somebody else or it happened to you, but not at that bar or something like maybe it was, or maybe it wasn't as severe of an injury. Maybe it just like bonked you in the nose. Yeah. Um, people are saying punching bags a lie. People are saying sword is a lie. Someone said poor Matt. Um, sword kind of sounds like a Matt thing. I'm like, so, okay. Punch bag. I'm saying punch bag. Okay. I, I am too. What is the answer? Oh, uh, you're both right. It is the punching bag. Wow. Yes! Okay, so what was the real thing that happened? I'm also, so good at this game. I'm sorry that you <laughs> oh. got like um a predator. It was predator preyed on. Yeah. Dude, also, I still had a gift card for one more free massage. No. <laughs> and you're like, no. Like, well, that's gonna expire. Right. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, the punching bag thing actually uh, happened to my brother, and the reason he dislocated his shoulder is because he had already previously dislocated that oh, shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so sense. like it had since healed, but like uh, he wasn't thinking about it because it had happened like years ago. But you know, it still like is damaged to an extent, and he punched it and just re-dislocated it. That's awful. Great. So, so I'm glad, glad it didn't and, happen to you. And yeah, the sort of thing is, is yeah, he an older brother or a younger brother? Older brother. Oh, interesting. That's not what yeah. I thought you'd say. Oh, wait, aren't you the youngest? I am the youngest. You're the youngest. Okay. Yeah. That's right, because he's the one who made the snail. He did make the snail, yeah. Well, he cooked it. <laughs> he made it. He made the snail into an edible thing for his much younger brother to eat for like <laughs> a quarter. Like, he's uh, like, there. I think it was $5. Five dollars. Uh, wow. Yeah. I've, I've had escargot before. How dare? No, you can't <laughs> tell me these things. <laughs> it just tastes like butter. But speaking of butter, butters is just chilling here. Uh, okay. I am. I am. I'm good at this. I say that, and I'm gonna get Iona's wrong. No, Iona, I, it's your turn. I've only been able to trick you twice. Once. 
maybe twice. I can't remember now. I don't but... know how, how often I've ever been able to do any trickery. I never keep score of that. I just keep score. I have always gotten yours wrong until just recently, and I don't know what happened, but we're just, like, on the same wavelength at this point. <sighs> yeah. yeah. So but... I just, you know, I, I, ha I follow my intuition because I have ignored it so many times in the past. Like lean into Haley. it. <laughs> so I'm leaning into it now. I'm <laughs> listening. It's yeah. just vibes only. Okay. <laughs> Your turn. Okay. So my theme are like spooky uh, interactions, just like going for the, the traditional Iona stuff of like scary things. Okay. Of, or like paranormal events. Okay. So the first one just happened oh. like yesterday. <laughs> he ate his brother's snail. The, the the funny thing that your last name isn't that far off. From I know. Right? It's, pretty <laughs> like, it's pretty close. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, funny. continue. Sorry. Okay, sorry, sorry. This just happened uh, last night slash this morning, but mu music was blaring in my husband's truck and would not shut off no matter like he had to car like- ghost. You know, definitely car ghost. Um, the car next go. one is a dresser slid across a room and smashed my friend's dad and then another the third one is as a kid i predicted a man's death that happened later that week well shit <laughs> um so okay uh, musical truck dresser slide or smash and um uh predicting a man's death okay Kay. three two one go what music was playing i honestly don't know it was like the really something he likes i have no idea honestly it was oh, so did, loud though how did you get it to turn off he shut off his phone <laughs> he had to shut off his phone, phone. ghost um how uh, smashed are we talking with the dresser guy broken ribs smashed so it, it literally just like boom, it flew like ribs. yeah did, we, did you see this happen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it was like in the upstairs of this lady's, like, how they were just going there to like get apples. And then she was like, how? if you go upstairs, there's other things if you want like extra stuff. Cause like people just give shit away. And so I went up with my friend and, and her dad, and we were just up in that room and it started shaking. And I was like, oh, like I thought maybe it was like an earthquake or something. And it just shot across and smashed him into the wall. It was crazy. And uh, then you guys just kept on. Yeah, no, like, we, were like, we have to go now to the hospital. And then he had. Uh, oh my gosh, that. Sorry, that reminds me of a completely different story. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, 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 what did the guy die of? Oh, uh, okay. This is dark. Um, but his wife's ex-husband came up and killed everybody and himself. So that was not good. How did you predict it? Like, did you you did you predict he was going to die, or did you just? I predict predicted that the, someone the, the was was hunting him. Okay. It was you know a super casual, normal thing for a child to say. I was like, "There's bad, there's a bad thing hunting you, and uh -huh. if you don't go away, you'll die." And so you were a kid, and you just like got a feeling and told this guy yeah and it, it wasn't a dream or anything it was just like a no i just was like around him um actually I was there with like one of my so uh, well my my mom and i also later as i grew up worked with a lot of um adults with intellectual disabilities and i was visiting and there's this one person that really likes dogs that wasn't able because of different disabilities to be around dogs because it was too like Heart, like if one would jump up or something so I brought my puppet that looks like a dog and was like pretending to be a dog with the person anyway so Aww. that was the whole thing but there was their aid was there and I don't know I just felt like really sick and awful and I was like I like you know so that super normal thing that I got in a lot of trouble for saying later and but then then, then everyone was afraid of me after <laughs> because it happened like a couple days later it was really sad Jesus okay let's go to the questions yeah okay well you already answered that one uh i think the dresser one is less likely but possible how yeah. old were you when the dresser thing happened 12 like i was in middle school okay like 11 oh, or 12. 
Oh shit, I had a night table shake. Glad it didn't yeet. <laughs> yeah, yeet. Yeah, no, Did no the lady yeet. say anything about the whole getting smashed thing? She was like, oh, that's probably my husband. And I was like, why did you send us up there then if he doesn't want us taking his things? Like, why would you? And also, like, why? Like, oh, that's my husband? Like, he's mad. Like, do you need us to tell you he's mad? He's really mad now. Like, what a that scary like, thing to say. Right. <laughs> Like, what are we doing? But it's Appalachia, so it's like, it's whatever. It's fine. I'm like, oh, it's him. Sorry, Charles, stop being so violent. Like, what? What? <laughs> My husband's just casually breaking. Ribs. Everyone's traumatized now, Ethel. Like, please, <laughs> Ethel. <laughs> how how big was the dresser? It was pretty big. It was like it was like not like wardrobe height wise, but it was like one of those. You know, antique uh -huh. you know, yeah. big square wooden ones. It was not good. Okay. Uh, and how far did the dresser move? Like across the room. It was pretty clearly like not like, you know, <laughs> it didn't scooch. It like whoosh, smushed. Okay. It is time to decide. Weirdly enough, I feel very similar to the dresser story as I do the ball reduction story in that like i can't live in a world where that's true <laughs> like, for me to sleep at night that can't be true um i think the dresser is not true but for the same reason someone else said that like it, it, I think it's a slight detail i yeah, do like, think something supernatural happened but it maybe like didn't you know, like maybe it fell over or something like that. But it's so because I I know you've had tons of weird ghostly experiences, and I'm sitting there like, how have I not heard about this one? The little baby you being like, you're gonna die, just feels very on brand. So <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. That's so <laughs> and since the music one um, happened today, today four a.m. today, yeah. I for some reason that one just feels like and the fact that he had to turn off his phone that's like so specific and not like if, if, if i was making it up i would have been like i had to go into the car and turn off the radio my car doesn't even have a fucking radio it's a tesla you know <laughs> I, but I would have been so he did, stupid he did go into the truck and and turn it on and off and all that mm -hmm. stuff but it was just blank and he tried to turn down the music the turn down the volume and it would go down so, so I'm, I'm just gonna say the dresser and yeah. I'm, I'm with matt okay uh, so wait, wait, let, let's look at the comments okay. how far uh let's see uh I think the dresser, I think it's the dresser, uh, the death prediction, it's a mixed bag. Okay. Yeah. The lie is the dresser. You're both oh right. Yes! But Matt, Matt, it's not That's relieving. So it's not relieving. It didn't happen to me. It happened to my husband and his friend and his dad. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the lie is just that you were there. I, the lie was that I like was there. I wasn't there. This happened like pre me. Like this was when he was in middle school, and he went with his friend's dad, and the dad got smashed by a dresser. It was not good. Yeah. Um, Doing and like he, he had like a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> um, Man, yeah. I was just thinking, because I was thinking about my little interaction with my grandpa ghost, yeah. where he took his little, um, that flag, that's flag, and, flag shot it and he shoved it off the, um, the counter, and it was just kind of like a little slide and bloop, and I was like, maybe something like that happened, and maybe the ghost was a little bit. No, he got scared. crushed. No. I have a feeling, <laughs> I, 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 I need to ask him more about it. <laughs> Matt's still leaving his body. Go on. <laughs> um, but I have a feeling that, like, I don't know. I have a feeling that that the guy was bad or something because I don't like thinking that things can just like hurt you like that, like for no reason. Like, mm -hmm. it makes me wonder what was going on with his friend's dad. Not to victim blame either, but it does make me well, wonder. Like, why was that old farmer guy so mad? Yeah, at the dad. Maybe he was fucking Ethel. I doubt it. Ethel was like 90, so. Hey! Even more reason. We love cougars. <laughs> we love cougars here. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, so, the yeah, so I told you the whole story about me being a kid. Told you a story about that. But the weird thing that happened, so um, my brother had, you know, he's been helping me ever since my surgery with my baby. 
And um, he, because it was thunderstorming so badly last night, there's like all this rain and thunder and lightning and all this crazy stuff to the point where it like woke me and my husband up. And we have to sleep in separate places because we sleep with our baby and she'll, I don't, I can't have her kick where I got surgery. But anyway, so it still woke both of us up. And then there was this loud blaring music and I thought it was my brother coming home and my brother did come home, but then he walked in and it wasn't him and it didn't shut off. So I was like, oh, that's weird. And I fell asleep. But then my husband, he's like, it was going on for like a half an hour and he went outside and he tried to turn it off and like, it wasn't until he turned off his phone completely. He even turned off Bluetooth, turned off Wi-Fi, like all that stuff. He's like, what the hell? And I, I asked him what song it was. And he like did. He was like one of these. Like it was like he was listening to a playlist with like, oh, if you want this vibe, right. like listen those kind of things. So anyway, um, it, but what I think is really funny about it is that the next day, um, my husband was talking to my brother because they're taking care of the baby really, really early and they let me sleep in, which is so nice. But um, he was like, Caleb, like, that's my brother's name. It's like, Caleb, like, I did you hear that? Like, that was so loud. Like, did you hear that? And my brother was like brushing his teeth and he was like, oh, yeah, I got here and I figured you were just like crying in your truck or something. And I was like, what? <laughs> happen like on a Monday <laughs> uh, I was and I was like as if you even do that which is fine if he would but like that's not even something he does and then Matt or oh oops I accidentally so my husband's right. name is Matt but <laughs> pretend I didn't say his name out loud no. everyone's name is Matt here Sorry. yeah um so Gerard was <laughs> um so he was in and he was so mad because he was like he was like you didn't come and check on me. <laughs> I was like, he's like, you're going to just leave me there sobbing at 3 a.m. Listening. To the, to right. Like, just pass the hood of the car. And there, like, there. He's, like, yeah. like, he's like, you. why wouldn't he check on me? <laughs> I just thought it was so funny. And I was like, you too. Meanwhile, it's probably just Carson fucking with everybody or making sure everybody's awake when he got home or something i don't know yeah. that was weird but yeah so uh, we, we well on that note <laughs> on, on that very pleasant not at all horrifying note <laughs> let's wrap this stream up and we are going to dream of nothing but lovely things yeah <laughs> yeah matt is like a changed person <laughs> i'm sweating <laughs> so sorry and it's night where we are so oh yeah that's true see i still yeah. have dinner to do and stuff like yeah that. it's like okay. almost 10 30 because i wouldn't stop talking and so it <laughs> so i'm like good night <laughs> <laughs> good night sleep well <laughs> <laughs> okay all right folks uh tell everyone where they can follow you um okay so you can follow me at creepy core and folklore on instagram and tiktok um and i have a youtube um to like channel with the same name where sometimes i do updates but mostly it was for the podcast you can listen to creepy core and folklore podcast anywhere and i have 80 episodes you can binge um i'm trying to think what else oh you can buy my book ashes on amazon and audible in ebook paperback and audiobook formats and you can book a crystal ball reading and i will do a crystal ball reading and record what happens and then send that voice recording to you that's never coming back <laughs> he's like what they i mean knew is that a ghost was... is gonna kill me <laughs> <laughs> it's okay we we're full of friendly ghosts here yeah. okay, now Matt, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on Instagram and TikTok. And uh, they can find my work, uh, The White Harvester, and Sasha Black's The Rebel Diaries Anthology, available on Amazon. Awesome. And you can find me here on YouTube. Um, you guys know that I was uh, taking a little break from YouTube to focus on The Secret Project. And, and then my allergies went to shit. So I've just decided that I'm not posting any videos this month. So I will be streaming on Mondays and Wednesdays for the rest of April. Oh, butters, you're back. She is blessing us again. Uh, so if you want to join another stream, I will be here this Wednesday at the same time, 4 p.m. Pacific time, which is 7 p.m. Eastern time, I think. And um, 
follow me here. Be sure to like the stream. Uh, be sure to subscribe and give me a th or, or, and ring the bell so that you are alerted every time my content goes out. Mm -hmm. um, you can buy my books at all major retailers, and you totally should. Yes, butters, come here. Show, show them. Show them. She's like, buy her books, please. Buy my books. Uh, follow me on Instagram, especially if you want to see this cute girl, because that's where I show oh, all of the butters. All of the butters. But anywho, we will see you on Wednesday. All right. Bye. See you Bye. 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 Bye.